What's happening, you rock and roll kiss maniacs? You got Steve Brown from Trickster, sometimes Def Leppard, Tokyo Motor Fist, Rubik's Cube, and the co-producer, co-writer of Ace Freely's brand new spectacular album, 10,000 Volts. And we are here, and you are listening to my good friends, Tom and Zeus. This is the Shout It Out Loud cast. Turn it up. All hail, all things kiss. Rock and roll all night, and shout it out loud cast every day. People! The year is 1984. The band Wasp in the album is their infamous debut. Welcome to episode 57 of the album review crew. where We'll be getting into details on this legendary notorious. I don't know, but we'll let you know about this. We're going to be joined by our friend and guitarist for the band restraint. Tony Musalam. You've heard him here before. We did Doc and back for the attack. But until then, Zeus, it's me and you. What's up, buddy? Yeah, and he's uh, the culprit for the brand new music for the opening for this. AI. That is right. That's right. Yeah. Yep. So thank you for that, Tony. Speaking of things, can we thank Patreon for uh, bringing Wasp to the masses? No. <laughs> <laughs> but I shouldn't say that. Listen to the episode and you'll see if we should be thankful. How's that? Okay, okay, okay. All right, but last time was my pick. I had taken Rod Stewart's uh, Footloose and Fancy Free. Yep. Uh, I was, uh, to say surprise would be an understatement of the positive feedback we got on that album. Yep. And we did a poll, best song, favorite song. How'd that go, Tom? Yep. So the options were Hot Legs. I was only joking. You're in my heart and you keep me hanging on. No surprise. Hot Legs runs away with it at 58%. You're in my heart at 29, and then I was only joking, and you keep me hanging on. We're both tied at 6%. Vet Halen says it's a 50-50 pick between hot legs and you're in my heart for me. Action Jackson says, I'm going rogue, and I'm picking Born Loose. Sounds mostly like an old-school faces track. Yes, Action Jackson, you are correct. It should be Born Loose. La Mezgla says, I love the guitar solo on I Was Only Joking. And the arrangement on You Keep Me Hanging on Rips, he's right. That solo on I Was Only Joking is fantastic. That was a revelation to me. I yeah. don't even I don't even think I ever even heard the song uh, before that. So uh, let's check out a couple other comments here before we move on. Our buddy Nige Savage, the editor of our Kiss book, Raise Your Glasses, and uh, a metal nerd. Guys, your constant mentions of 200 stab wounds had me <laughs> no, absolutely no. cracking oh, no. up. No, no, they made it to another Another episode in the ARC episode. It says resistance is futile. Embrace the death metal. Oh, Oh. God. John Gross says great pick. Zeus can't wait to listen. Our buddy Heavy Mayo says two hours and 40 minutes. Awesome. That's half of my mail route. Yes, because Heavy Mayo is the Newman of Shout It Out Loudcast. (laughs) Deer with anime eyes. That is quite a twitter handle zeus okay. you accomplished zeus you accomplished what you wanted i would have never heard this album without this episode honestly i couldn't finish the episode the music is so old folks and dated i had to turn it off zeus would you like to oh. rebut that no it's just stupid okay this well you be on stupid well we well, well we did we did rebut him on twitter we said do, do you think we needed a terrible music opinion now <laughs> so he, he heard us twisted kister had a couple of comments very cool looking forward to this one stewart's pre-80s music isn't talked about enough compared to everything else discovering his 60s and 70s work is an amazing thing yes and of course our good friend and co-host for that episode, the great James Campion, 
Guys, this was fun. We break this puppy down. Yes, James, we did, and you are awesome on that. Thank you. Our buddy Steve, as always, ranking songs and albums and covers. Good stuff. Beach Boys of the Goat says, can't wait to hear this. Born Loose Rocks. Yes, it does. My favorite song on the album for sure. But yeah, fun episode for sure. Like you said, Zeus, pleasantly surprised. And uh, that's what we got for Twitter. All right. On the Book of Face. Uh, Jason Warden, who I know is a big Rod fan. Sweet. My all-time favorite singer. Great album. Thank you, Zeus. Wow. Uh, nice. Tony the Taxman Barone. Ooh. Sooner or later, we'll be back to him and uh, telling everybody to get their taxes done by Tony Barone. And just be careful of his music picks. Yeah, because me and him agree on everything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I didn't know you were a fucking uh, cool fanatic, Tom. Like, uh, th- that, that's probably the only thing we separate on. But go ahead. All right. He writes, pleasant surprise on this pick. Uh, Mark Lipset. Imagine Mike Delights this morning when I saw album review, uh, Footloose and Fancy Free on the same day as my Raise Your Glasses book is arriving. Yeah. This has been one of my favorite albums since its release. Hot Legs is legendary. You're Insane is an awesome deep cut. Side 2 is like a mini opera starting with the great cover of You Keep Me Hanging On with a piano interlude into a soulful If Loving You Is Wrong with Rod belting out lyrics at the end. Then comes to a one-two gut-wrenching combo of You Got a Nerve and I Was Only Joking, which is my favorite Rod Stewart song. Starts mm. off slowly, builds to the solo, which starts on an acoustic guitar and morphs into electric guitar. The song slows back down into a superb ending. A solid, solid album, front to back, and much appreciated pick by Zeus. Thank you, gentlemen, for the entertainment. I am a mass hole. I look forward to meeting you and getting an autographed copy. Mark, nice. what town do you live in? Let us know. Yeah, let us know, Mark. That's awesome. Thank you. Paul Heider says, looking forward to... Fucking now we got Rand McNally comments left and right. Thanks to you. Uh, heading out in the road. <laughs> You're welcome. 200 stab wounds. Oh, no. <laughs> I like these episodes where you explore your own personal favorites rather than going with albums that might play better with your listeners. Um, yeah. Wait till you hear this episode. Uh, wait until you hear the next episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. My pick. Yeah. This one that we're going to hear tonight is our listeners pick. Uh, I'm more happy to go along for the ride. Keep doing it as the ARC listeners pick will usually take care of the more mainstream stuff. Now, if you only guys would check out Red Rise Riders as far as Siam or Neruda. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the great Jack Pinocchio. Yeah, Jack. I honestly think Rod Stewart is the coolest guy in music. Could be. Okay. Uh, Tom Selig says, when I first saw this, I was like, what the fuck? Thanks to the Pixus, I forgot how much I had listened to this as an 11 year old. Time to get a new blue vinyl. Ooh. Love when we get people into yes. stuff that, that, you know, they didn't, weren't going to get into until yep. we brought it up. Oh, no. Kevin Japson. Oh, God. Giggity, 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 giggity. Oh, Kevin. Oh, he, fe- he, he features. Pr- uh, forget it, I won't even spoil it. Forget it. Oh, Kevin, who's on the P. Diddy list. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> no wonder he had all that baby oil with him at Creatures <laughs> Fest. Quagmire Kevon. Uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> giggity, giggity. That's already, good. That's already been inputted. So. I know. Uh, I know nothing about Rod. Maybe a handful of songs, but I enjoyed the shit out of this. Besides the If Loving You Is Wrong. <laughs> like, all I think about is that fucking Coming to America. Yep, me too. <laughs> I love the Lord. And loving the loving Lord. you was wrong. I don't want to be I right. Be right. He, he held Gilligan. <laughs> Get off the island. I thought it was Joshua at the Battle of Jericho. He held yes. Daniel. Get, <laughs> Get out, out the lion's den. He held Gilligan. <laughs> Get out the Get off the island. Yeah. I want you to grab. I want you to grab on. <laughs> God's on chin <laughs> hand. <laughs> <laughs> he is the best reverend there. <laughs> Girl, you look so good. Somebody ought to put you on a plate and suck you over the biscuit. Ooh. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Only God can give that woman the kind of joy she's feeling right now. Joy. Say, joy. Joy. <laughs> Turn oh. around, ladies. <laughs> Turn around. <laughs> 
<laughs> the Miss Black Awareness Pageant. <laughs> hey, you Hefner, Larry Flint. They take a picture. Well, they got a glove. I won't give that woman the kind of joy she's feeling right now. Say joy. Joy. The whole episode. We're just gonna that. we're just gonna read the script to the movie. The Miss Black Awareness Pageant with some good, 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 clean girls. Hey, church is good. Church is good. <laughs> oh, this here, this place here, where I'm going tonight. Ooh, I'll be some fag. Uh, hey, Stu, your rent's new, <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> Don't play that fall down the stairs, shitty. I know you can hear me. And then you hear. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Chepson says, wow, I know another. Besides loving you is wrong. Everyone. I will definitely be looking up more into his stuff. Really like what I heard. Any recommendations who to start with? Maybe a greatest hits, good episode, love and discover. I'll send you a text, buddy. I'll let you know. Uh, Darren, don't call me Mike Hunt. <laughs> no, that was somebody else that was that. Wasn't it earlier in the week? I don't know. Thoroughly enjoyed this episode. Such a great album. I also remember going to spend time with my cousins when I was really young. And my aunt playing this album constantly. I totally agree with James. His solo discography from here back is incredible. You can't go wrong. I like some stuff afterwards to some great songs, but maybe not great albums. For me, it doesn't compare to his earlier stuff. Bobby Kenner, knocked out of the park, boys. I have to admit, not a huge Stewart fan. But one thing you guys excel is talking about album and artists in a way that gets me interested. Even if it's not one of my go-tos. I do enjoy his classic stuff, but you got me to go back and check out this full album. My hat's off to you, gents. Again, we love nice. this shit. Yep. Love it. It's awesome. Oh, I get, I had to get back to on this one. Michael Murphy's. Zeus, kindly put your insurance carrier on notice as I was driving to work. Listen to this episode. And I heard you state that the band and this middling album was the Rolling Stones with the better singer. This caused me to drive off the road and crash into a ditch, oh, causing irreparable, uh, irreparable damage to my vehicle as well as bottle injury. You will be hearing from my lawyer. I said, yeah, I said that musically they are. Didn't say they had better songs. Didn't say they were a better band. I said, musically, they're as good as the fucking Stones. Th their drummers are not even fucking close. Their singers are not even fucking close. Guitar-wise... Keith Richards got more riffs in and shit in his pocket than anybody. He's a great songwriter. I'm not comparing yeah. them. But the guitarist there, they had fucking three guitarists on in that band. And their bassist is fucking incredible. Yep. Um, sorry. They they musically they can compete. And that's the thing. It's just a lost band. Anyways, uh, let's go to Loud Casters, Tom. Do it. Uh, Graham Richley says, hell yeah, Zeus. Rock and Rod was the soundtrack of the 70s. Love it. John Whiteman, who's fucking incredibly funny, decided to find that photo of Rod and superimposed my head on it ah. with Rod and his girlfriend in the pubes hanging out. And then, not and then not long after, our, our the guy we love from Super 70s Sport, I think it was, posted that picture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. we, had, we, had, we had to retweet it and be like, this is what we're talking about if you don't know. Yeah, he wrote good stuff. I hadn't heard this album before, but I'll be adding Born Loose to my playlist. I'm looking forward to Zeus releasing a Rod Stewart's cover album and hopefully not needing a stomach pump like allegedly Rod did. Oh, Here's a potential God. album cover, and he put that photo up. Nice. Um, let's see if we can go to you. Slurry God says, great album review. I was only joking. Killer song. Takes me back when I was young. Rod's voice and attitude is a treasure. Underrated I on. Mm -hmm. Wow. Pretty boy Floyd DMS says, I remember the oldest brother, Bud, rest in peace, rest in peace, buddy, got this album for Christmas in 77. I got Love Gun and my younger brother, Tom, got Rock and Roll Over. We played wow. the shit out of all three albums every day. That's Loved awesome. it and missed those days. Wow. What yeah, that's really cool. Uh, Christopher Early, 5258. One of my all-time favorite albums. He had a string of albums from the mid to late 70s that were consistently great. Hot Legs was my first vinyl purchase I ever made as a 45. You're Insane, which was the B-side, is insanely overlooked. You're in My Heart is pure classic. I agree that his version of You Keep Me Hanging On is the version. I'm not normally a big fan of long instrumental fade-offs, but this is an exception. Mine 
blowing. And it mm. ends with one of the best 70 songs ever done. I was only joking. Wow. Such a heartful song with an outstanding guitar solo. Beautiful song. Tom Dow did a spectacular job in production. What a solid band he had in his voice. Just so distinct and great. Also agree that it cool cover front and back. Entertaining listening fellas. Wow. Thank nice. You. Thank you. That's great. Uh, Harper Motorsport 16. You're insane and born loose are absolute killers. And we'll end with Cody Brunette, 3547. If it wasn't for this show, I never would have listened to anything but two songs they play on the radio. Songs like Hot Legs, Three Time Loser, Brown Sugar, and Star Star show why they will never be any more artists like Rod Stewart and the Stones with cancel culture. Mm. Okay. Um, Tom, that's what I have. All right. Let's take a look over here at Instagram. <laughs> Instagram Bulletproof Music 23, which I believe is our buddy, the Thunder from Down Under, Thanis yeah. Akratides. Love the album. Rod Stewart is one of a kind. Most things he touches are brilliant. Ooh. Don D. Brown Jr. Love this album. All right, Zeus, and that'll wrap it up for feedback on Rod Stewart this time around. All right. Let's take a quick little break, and we'll be back with Tony for our review of wasp all right so we're bringing in our buddy tony from restrain tony welcome back to the show buddy we haven't had you here since the back for the attack episode doc and if i recall correctly that was quite a few years ago welcome back brother Correct. It has been a really, really, really long time. It's good to see you guys. Yeah, and, and we figured it's Wasp. We got to have Tony. <laughs> oh, of course, because <laughs> when you think of Wasp, you think of Tony. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I think, no, we had Jericho on twice. I was going to say, but you're entering a very elite group. Yes. People that have been on ARC more than once. And yep. Oh, you are on okay, there. Well, so that thank you for that. Yeah, um, I'll take that. Thank I you. just we were like wasp who like whose zone is this in? And we're like, um, throw out a couple names. And we're like, how about Tony? He's like, I don't even know if Tony likes wasp. I go even better. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess you will soon find out. Yeah. And we're I think we're all the same kind of way. Yeah. Um. So. Just to let everybody know, just starting off, uh, this is the Patreon pick. And I have something and to say about that. So <laughs> what sure we do, do is now we have all these extra Patreon members. I don't know if there's collusion or what, but for the there's, first time ever, there's collusion. we had like, we once in a while, we'll get two, so, two uh, albums picked by Patreon members. And when we do like, okay, that gets in the poll. And then yep. when we get up to four, if any album gets more than two gets two picks it goes in the poll so usually is one maybe two so those two go in and then we look at the list and tom and i choose okay let's throw these two albums in yep. and then the patreon members pick from those lists well fucking this debut had three or four and two, two other albums had two or the, more the entire poll this was the first patreon this is the first poll oh that's right and ever all four albums were automatically put into the poll because they had multiple submissions. What this out al- this Wasp album, I think got three, maybe four, and and I and I will never forget this. I said I said to Zeus, he goes he goes oh it, yeah put it in the he, put it in the poll. Quote it's not gonna win. <laughs> yeah. And, and I, <laughs> wait and wait I said, there was another b- album that got two that we couldn't pick it put it in because that would have been five and, and we, we only, only do four. So right. we're like, okay, that goes automatically to next month's poll. Yeah, but I was like, oh, Wasp ain't gonna fucking win anyway. What do you <laughs> and what did I? And when Zeus said, when, when Zeus said that, my response was, oh yes, it will. I know our audience. There's gonna mm-hmm. be the audience. The, the people who vote are either gonna love Wasp and want to hear us talk about it, or hate Wasp and want to hear us talk wanna about hear. it. <laughs> exactly. So this one, yeah, and and it won easily like right from the start it was right leading from the start. and it never lost anything yep I'm, and i'm just like where wow. the fuck is this love coming from 
And again, <laughs> I, I mean, I know Wasp. I have had a couple albums on. I know of them. They're not a go-to band of mine. So I, I don't know. Tom sure doesn't know how I really feel about them, and I don't know how he feels. No, none of Hence, us do. We don't know how you feel. So we thought, <laughs> fuck it, let's go in. Either Patreon people are gonna fucking hate us or love us. Fuck it. Yeah. Too bad. Tony, why don't, Tony, you're you're the guest of honor here. Why don't you start off and just tell us your entry point with Wasp? If you hit have a history of Wasp and well, yeah, this you, album specifically, when you got it or yeah. when you started listening to it? Oh, I remember exactly when I got it. Okay, <laughs> here we go. Two weeks ago, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> when you guys <laughs> called me, that's when I got it. First yeah. time I ever heard it, I was in the shower. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, alone. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Wouldn't you like to know? <laughs> no, with so, Chris um, with Chris Holmes in the corner drinking oh, a bottle of Jack Daniels. <laughs> uh, he, was, he was reinventing the decline of Western civilization. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. No. Um. My entry point to Wasp. I mean, I, I'll. Mm, I don't want to give away too much, but okay. obviously, hey, I guess you're I'm a West my, Coast guy. Did you know did. them? Yeah, I knew about Wasp. You know, I mean, I was into. Uh, Rat and Dawkin and all of those bands at the time. And the image with, you know, the, the blood and the raw meat and all that sh- stuff really didn't appeal to me at the time. You could say totally shit. Different. You were about to say shit. And you, know, were, and you, I've, I've been editing myself. I don't know why. You know, I'm sure it'll fucking, it'll fucking come out. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Right. Um, um, yeah. So I, I just never really kind of got into them. There was something about Blackie's voice that got on my nerves there's also something about like why is this pasty pudgy dude wearing paul stanley's leotards yeah. from destroyer you know what i mean and yeah. then he added a saw blade what, what, what i didn't i don't need to see that you know what i mean yeah. um so there's that part of it but then just musically like i said i, th- I think it was blackie's voice at the time that um didn't really appeal to me um, things obviously changed, uh, as I grew older, um, I got into like, uh, I think it was probably the, I don't know what it's called. Last command or whatever. Um, last command. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. With wild child and blind in, blind Texas. in Texas. Yeah. Yep. That's, that's when I started getting into wasp, yep. but I never did what so many people do and go the deep dive and go backwards. Mm-hmm. I just didn't bother. Mm-hmm. So yep. I really never listened to this record. I've heard, like two, three songs before, but that's really about it. So really the first time I actually gave this record a listen was like I said, starting two weeks ago. So, um, yeah. So that's kind of where I'm at with them. Yeah. I mean, for me, so I've never owned this album until Patreon picked it. So I've been listening to it for about a month or so. I knew about Wasp growing up because like you, Tony, and like you, Zeus, and all of our listeners, this was, you know, 83 you know, that era, you know, we're, we're listening to Doc and Rat, Molly Crew, you know, kind of Priest, Def Leppard, Maiden, Kit, you know, all that stuff. So it's funny. I was listening to this and I'm like, how did, how did I not get into Wasp? Because there's a lot of similarities visually and musically. And let me, let me be clear that I'm not saying they're the same or, but I'm saying there's a lot of similarities between like what Motley Crew was doing, especially Shout Out the Devil era, you know, some, some Kiss stuff, some, you know, Aussie stuff. And I think I was thinking, I'm like, I just think Wasp was like, at that age, I was 10 when this album came out. And you're like, oh, that, oh, that's that band. Yeah, that's that band that's like, they have that, like, that, that song that, like, you, you can't find anywhere. Like, this is the guy that, like, drinks, like, blood out of, like, a skull. Like, nobody, you can't listen to Wasp. Like, this is way too serious. It's kind of like when you're a little kid and you think, like, Prom Night is, like, a scary movie. And then when you get older, you're like, this is stupid. Well, this isn't scary. <laughs> but, when, but, but, but when you're 10 years old, you're like, oh, my God, Blackie Lawless is the devil. Like, he literally is the devil. Exactly. And, and, and it just – and they weren't really accessible. I know MTV played them a little bit. I'll be honest with you. I didn't really start really learning a lot about Wasp until 2008. That's when I subscribed to Sirius, Sirius XM. And Hair Nation and uh, Boneyard, they played – uh, wild child all the time blind in texas all the time and i knew i want to be somebody in love love machine i knew those but i never owned this album and i never knew really much about them i mean you can't really everybody knows about blackie 
I mean, they're touring right now. They're touring. They're playing this entire album start to finish. They're touring. So, but yeah, I just, it was just kind of a band. It was just kind of a gap in my music library for, so whether or not I'll be grateful to pay Patreon or not, we'll find out at the end, I guess. <laughs> what's what's funny is like you you asked us hey they're touring in boston this whole album and you're like you want to get tickets i'm like you'll know by the end of this uh whether i want to get tickets um anyways wasp it, it, it's funny they appeal to that 10 year old oh, and totally i think they're they're another one of these poster child for people that are dismissive of what's called hair metal or glam metal or shock rock they're like, oh, this is just fucking stupid shit. I yep. think they're the poster child for it. Because uh, as I've told this, our audience many times before, when I was young in the summers, I'd go to Greece and I'd buy these cassettes where the fucking orders or the albums are always songs are backwards. But side two, second song is on side one and vice versa. Like a lot of the Zeppelin stuff. So to kill time, I didn't have, I'd go with my mom to Greece and sit there and fucking nothing new. I'd go to these record stores. I walked in and I saw our fucking last command yep. and stupid shit like that. I literally headless bought, children. Yeah. Headless I literally children. bought <laughs> this of all the albums in there. I didn't hear one Iron Maiden song, but I bought their albums. I bought the cassettes from the covers because mm-hmm. I thought they were cool. And I bought wasp ones. And I'll never forget, listen, to, I'm a wild child. Come and love me. I want you. Just, <laughs> it wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be like devil shit. But I had some Wasp off. I bought their live album. I, I think that was one of the CDs I had early on. Yep. Um, so I had some stuff. I had some ignore, like Headbangers Ball. I saw everything Headbang. I would tape it every weekend. Oh, yeah. And then watch the videos later. Yep. Um. So I knew of them. I don't have this album. I never had this album. And so when it came to getting this, I was, I looked it up and I'm like, wait a minute, this is all fucked up. Um, I thought animal fuck like a beast is on it. And like, you know, Wikipedia doesn't have it. And they say, oh, it came out later on with the reissue. Yep. I'm like, oh, so what's the actual album? So for anybody that's out there, we are going to review animal fuck like a beast but we're not going to do the two bonus tracks that came out on the right the issue show no mercy and paint it black right um so that's the that's where we're going to start on this album but as far as wasp goes there's so much to talk about as far as the band itself i guess they're a, a blackie lawless was a fucking retread in the la scene with a million different bands and it's funny because when you look back in the history of him stuff and with him in London and Circus Circus and all this stuff with Nikki Six, Nikki you're Six, kind of yeah. like, who was copying who? Because yes. there's a lot of crew mm. wasp things. Let's be outrageous. And the outfits, you know what that outfit is? That outfit that he wears is like that Gene animalized outfit where the thigh is exposed. Yep. And you're like, mm. Gene, I don't need to see your thighs exposed <laughs> in the middle. It's not fucking. No, it's not very sexy. Tom. It's not yeah, sexy. but. Blackie doubles down and puts his oh. ass out instead of his thigh. I'd, ra- I'd be okay yes. with his thigh, but this yes. guy's got his ass out. Come on. Yeah, he is not. The whole fucking band is not what you would call a handsome band. No. So they, it, there's just something about them, and we'll get to it when we give a final wrap up of this band. But they, I guess they could, you could tell they've been around, and he, Blackie is. Someone that's been in the LA scene yeah. and a lot of the ideas that have been spitting around are very, I don't know, kiss crew type well, of well, fucking yeah, ideas, fire, blood, outfits, outrageous shock, shock, razor blades on your outfit. Instead of Gene Spikes, he's got fucking saw blades. Saw blades. Yeah. But I mean, look at that. Like this, this album came out the same year as Shout at the Devil, if I'm correct. And Three, yeah. Four. And then. And then, and then look at the look at the video for "Looks That Kill." Okay, Motley mm-hmm. Crue. And then look at like the album cover of this, or the other video, which we'll we'll get to the videos for. That. Like you can. Tell, I want to like, be somebody. Looks like it was like okay, um, too fast for love. Okay, you're done, Motley. Okay, exactly. Come on in, Wasp. Now it's your set. Yeah, <laughs> take over you, and do your video. But you and you you brought up a good point too, Zeus. You said like that. 
I, and that's kind of the point I was getting at when I was using like the horror movie analogy. Like when, when you're like a young kid, you think this stuff is like, yeah. like aggressive and scary and violent and raw and nasty. And there is a little bit of rawness to it. But when you're older, you're like, what? Do these guys work at like spirit Halloween? What is this? Like, you know what I mean? Like having, yeah, because yeah. having grown up and seen all those bands and yeah. artists and now looking back and you can kind of see, you're like, dude, this is fucking stupid. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. It's actually a really good point because I think that had a lot to do with why I didn't get into them is I was yeah. listening to all the melodic hair metal, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. And I was like, oh, Wasp, that just looks like a like a way heavy band that I'm not going to get into. Me too. You know what same, I mean? Yeah, that, same thing. Don't me. look like. Yeah. Because you see the pictures in like Metal Edge or whatever. And Blackie's got the blood all over him. And they just look so aggressive. And just it didn't look. And I judged the book by its cover, of course, yeah. apparently, you know, but it, I thought they were going to be a lot heavier and a lot um, more aggressive than they actually are. Yeah, yeah, and I then think Metallica, that's, I think Slayer, and Megadeth that are out there are like, dude, are you fucking kidding me? That's not right. heavy, me- heavy fast or whatever metal. This but you're right. You right. See, shit. Yeah, you see the stuff in like in like Hit Parader and all the bands that you named, Tony, that we that Zeus that we all listen to. You're right. You see the imagery with Wasp, and I'm like, ah, I, I'm, I think I think I'm, I think I'm good. Plus, I don't think my mom is gonna buy me the cassette of this <laughs> if like. You, know you don't what I mean? want somebody like, with a, a cod piece spitting with out. With a saw blade. And <laughs> no, s- with a saw spin, blade and spitting out fire and sparks <laughs> out of his cock. It's, it's fucking amazing. The, it's amazing. My favorite thing with them is the whole throwing meat out. Oh, oh disgusting. Just, I love it. Like, it's so stupid. I'll never forget, like, after Hair Metal had died, VH1 yeah. started doing, like, a lot of retro hair metal stuff, and it really did well. They had the uh, the Brett Michaels fucking um, uh, dating game show. They had where are these oh bands God. now? Rock they had of so love much, yeah, of, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they had so much of this retro shit, and it was very popular. Yeah. And they did one about the hair metal stuff. And I remember Wasp or somebody in the band. I, I don't know if it was Chris Holmes. Somebody was talking about how they fucking would throw with all the meat. Yeah. But somebody had taken like a fucking full ham or some frozen thing, <laughs> chucked it at him and, and like hit him in the head out. Yeah. And, knock, and knocked him yeah. out unconscious. And he had a concussion, and everything. And he's like, and then afterwards, he said something like along the lines, like, you know, if we wrote better songs, we wouldn't have to do this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, probably true, which is looking back like, what do you do? Oh, we buy roast beef and we throw it at people, and the and then the fans throw shit at us. <laughs> yeah, right. oh, oh. oh, and that oh, goes God. with uh, "Love Me Do" that you perform on stage, right? <laughs> yeah, or yesterday, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. That's what happens uh, at Beatles concerts. Yep. It's true. Like they they just took every formula you can think of between Crew, Kiss, Alice Cooper, and let me throw it against the wall and see what I, sticks. I think when people talk about yep. like the over the top hair metal, gla- you, you talk about bands like, like a band like Britney Fox or like Vinnie Vincent Invasion, like the super glammy shit. But then when you talk about like the super insanely ridiculous, like shock rock, it's it's got to be Wasp. I mean, Wasp is like that wing of hair metal, the way we talk about like Britney Fox. Shock rock. Shock rock. That's yeah. Just just, you know, the blood and guts, the skulls, the girls, the sex, the fire, the you know, the weapons, the knives, the bones. You know, and it's like at the time you're a kid, you're like, this is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And then your old men like, yes, you're like, this is the fucking dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire <laughs> life. Oh, you're a tough guy now. Ooh, <laughs> whatever. Whatever. All right, let's get into some quick little uh facts. And the first thing we usually do then before I throw out the facts, actually, is we talk about the album cover. Tony, you want to give us any thoughts about this fucking masterpiece here? Uh, what? (laughs) Boy. Come on, Tony, uh, tell us. (laughs) You know, when you look like that, you probably don't want to be on the cover if you're trying to sell (laughs) this thing. That's, I mean, it's, they're not pretty, as you said, definitely not. I mean, this is not uh, poison. And, And, um, I mean, but they're putting out exactly what, well, you know what? I mean. It's what they're about, but it, I don't think it represents what they sound like. 
Perfect. I don't it, think it's it, a good representation of what they sound like. That it, this is exactly why I'm like, eh, I ain't buying that. It, it's a great point. I mean, first of all, we just this is the most dollar store <laughs> like skeleton horror. Like this is what you do like when you're in college and you're having like a Halloween party in your dorm room and you only have like ten bucks to buy decorations. So you go to like the grocery store and buy that six foot plastic skeleton like this. Hmm. And then, and then you notice you get the 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 eyes like there's like a I, like a yeah. I just never, noticed it just now by looking at it. No, oh really, really? I swear, because I never. What do you want me to stare at these ugly guys? I, like I just picked <laughs> up on it now. I'm like, oh, somebody's yeah. I, I mean, at me. I, I mean, the band itself with like the rocks and the smoke and the bones and the saw blades. Like, okay, but that skeleton thing is just fucking laughable. It's just oh, it's so silly. And and Tony, you're right. Well, I mean, we'll obviously get into it. The music doesn't sound really like this album cover. Mm-mm. No. All right. <laughs> Looking at these guys, that looks like Dime Store Zach Wild, Chris Holmes. Oh, yeah. Like That's oh, what he wants yeah. to be, right? I mean, but I mean, I don't know if Zach is trying to copy Chris Wild, but uh, Chris Holmes, because this is Zach, obviously Zach ain't copying for. Chris Holmes. No. Nah. <laughs> I mean, that's the in, fucking in no book. way. No. Yeah. Um, that drummer loves that pose. If you see, we'll talk about it later in these mm-hmm. videos. Oh, God, yeah. he loves to be banging his fist and head. Um, <laughs> the other guy is just a weird that fucking yeah, rhythm Randy guitar Piper. is a weird looking guy, very strange looking. And then yeah. you know, Blackie Lawless is dime store Gene Simmons. I'm going to mm-hmm. be Gene Simmons without the makeup, the demon. I'm this crazy. But I, guy. but I, but, but I will say this. Skull. I will say that I thought he's. Wick Kiss fan, so everything comes through the lens of Kiss, like you said, with the dime store Gene Simmons. I still always thought he had a badass look about him. I just the way he carried his mouth and his eye, the way his yeah. face is, like his I just thought he always looked like, yeah, like all right, badass. All right. Okay. Maybe yeah, I'm, I'm with Tony know. a little bit though, with the pasty fucking Elon Musk fucking body. Oh yeah. No, <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> look, uh, Elon Musk. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like those boat <laughs> photos of Elon Musk. Like oh just, my god! I don't know. Sometimes I guess he can look cool, but he is kind of chubby. Am I wrong? Well, now he is. Now oh, he's yeah. looks I mean, like now he's like even Tubby Lawless. Lawless. It was it, Tubby Lawless. <laughs> Tubby Lawless. <laughs> Fatty Lawless. Flabby uh, Lawless. I hope he's not listening. Yeah, I mean, he looks like a pudgy. Edit that out. <laughs> edit that out. <laughs> yeah, he was always pudgy. I, yeah. I wouldn't say he was like fat. I mean, he was like, <laughs> he wasn't exactly slim like was most. Gene Simmons, them. 80s fat. Yeah. 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 Like, like the little, Gene little, got a little, little bit roll little on the waistline. <laughs> little little yeah. dad bod action. <laughs> like the yeah. pants have to be a little higher to get over that roll, you know? <laughs> but he, um, dad bod. Yeah, I would say his look is okay. Um, the album cover also has the Wasp logo, which is on fire, which is something I guess they did. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I, I can, I can't give shit to them so much of ripping off Motley or kiss. We kind of kiss did a little of that shit to, to Alice Cooper and stuff. Oh yeah. I mean, there's course. everybody borrows from everybody. Yeah. It is very unique because I can't think of a band that much that was kind of like this. Cause then you get into those, Dungeons and Dragons bands that are a little mm. bit different than these guys They're into sorcery and I think the, and I, I, I think the thing yeah oh yeah I think the thing that kind of screws them on this uh, this is just my opinion from coming from like talking about Kiss and Maiden and those even Slayer if this was like artwork and and not this like Sears portrait studio <laughs> shot that they tried to take like you know what i mean like if this was like an art like a piece like you know like destroy or like a painting or something it could have it could have had a little bit more pop this how's is this like amateur shit you know how's mm. this they used to tie up women in their concerts on the mm-hmm. rack yeah mm-hmm. they, if they had a like a scantily clad woman tied up like yeah that. for the era it would have worked better than that like you said the fucking dime store fucking skeleton the, yeah the skeletons that looks so fake yeah i mean uh, otherwise but the eyes things is really pretty cool. I just picked up on it. So not bad. At least, hey, we're talking about this more so than the fucking Tesla album cover or Winger album it's cover. true. With just it's weird true. designs. At least yeah. this is interesting. I agree. And I will say, 
like like I was told you guys when I walked into those cassette stores in the eighties, I picked up fucking Iron Maiden because of the cover. I picked up Wasp because of the covers because they're you know like oh this will be cool this is interesting yeah well, maybe I it agree. worked I agree. Um, let me give you guys a quick little couple facts on the album. So the debut album came out August seventeenth, nineteen eighty four, produced by Blackie Lawless, a guy named Mike Varney. Who was a big record guy, I guess, back at the time. The album made it to number 74 in US Billboard. It did go gold. Uh, shock rock album and a favorite of the PMRC. Yeah. Good old oh, fat yeah. ass tip of gore Ooh. and shit. The Parent <laughs> Music yeah. Resource Center. Yep. Um, apparently, they had three different titles on this. At one point, it was going to be called Wing Assassins on the European vinyl. It had that on there for a little bit. And it also yep. had I Want to Be Somebody on under the early cassette version of this. Uh, Animal Fuck Like a Beast was removed. So not to piss off PMRC, they were playing this live. It was, and they actually did release as a single in Europe, but not here in the U.S. Um, and so the album then, uh, you know, got released in 84. And uh, they became part of the LA scene. Yeah, and that's kind of what I again, like, kind of what I remember about this. I, I I feel like they're more famous for for me, like the, with the PMRC shit, which Twisted Sister D Snyder said it's that the best thing that ever happened to Twisted Sister was PMRC. You know, like a lot of these bands, they they made their careers off of that. And growing up at that time, I think that's what I knew about Wasp was hearing about through the through the magazines, you know, Metal Edge, Hit Parader, you know, whatever hearing about all the all the you know the the notoriety with the band and but really hearing them eh, i don't know this is gonna be the first time we're digging into this i think for all three of us last thing i just want to say at the time of this album being released you had blackie the band was blackie lawless the uh, vocals bass mm -hmm. and obviously producer chris holmes was lead in rhythm guitars randy piper lead in rhythm guitars and tony richards was drums and back and vocals what was that Tony from Restraint? Were you playing Hell on this no. album? <laughs> Hell no. I don't want to be part of this. All right, we already know how Tony thinks. So <laughs> oh, I've never, I've, I've never posed like that in my life. I promise. Yeah. Well, I'm not surprised, <laughs> brother. Uh, that's a positive thing. Well, <laughs> it's definitely a positive. Thing. Let's start off this album with the first track. Here we go. All right, so the album opens up with Animal Fuck Like a Beast. We're doing the 1998 reissue with the inclusion of this song. So this is the song a lot of people talk about, or at least even if you don't know the, the song and heard it, you're aware of it. I'll tell you right off the bat, um, the production on this, I love it, okay? It's heavy. There's got a little bit of reverb to make it sound like it's a lot more fuller. It's not slick. It's not poppy. There's, there's, there's melody to this. The chorus is fucking catchy. And that's the thing, Tony, to, to, to what you were saying. And we'll get into it. You know, when you, when you jump in here, I never expected this kind of hooky, heavy stuff from them. I, it reminds me, and again, I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it's, it, it is this, but it reminded me of shout at the devil, real heavy, real like aggressive but had hooks, had melody. The chorus to this song, you could sing this chorus. I mean, you're not going to walk around your house and do it with your family, but <laughs> you know, you could sing this chorus. And I'll tell you, Tony, and I don't know what, what your thoughts are on this now. I love Blackie's voice. I think it's, I think it's killer. I think it's heavy. I think it sounds great. I think he can hit notes when he needs to hit them. I think it's got power and melody during these choruses. So right off the bat, I'm in with this song. Yeah, I mean... I lick my chops. I mean, how, how do you not love a song that has that as a lyric? I mean, they came out of the gates just guns blazing with this song. And I think it pretty much sums up what they're about, which is just aggressive, vulgar, yep, and surprisingly super melodic and catchy. Yep. And I am with you. I I, I'm, I really like Blackie's voice now after listening to this record. Um, I have a new respect for Blackie. Um, the, I've known about this song to to what you said just a minute ago. Yeah, pretty much everybody's heard, oh, Wasp, Fuck Like a Beast. But I've never heard the song. At least if I have, I don't remember it. You yep. know? Um, 
And then listening to it, I was just like, holy shit. I actually like this. <laughs> and Me too. That's I, I did believe. walk around singing or humming it anyways. <laughs> you know what I mean? I don't I don't do the the end of the pre-chorus there with the, the fuck like a beast bit, but uh the were you singing? It, were, were you were you walk around singing the the greatest opening line in the history of rock music? I got pictures of naked pictures ladies. Of naked ladies. <laughs> oh my god, that has been living in my head for the past oh, so few weeks. Bad. So bad. Listen, he's not a master lyricist. Okay, no. I mean, a lot of these lyrics, if you actually read them, make no sense. And it'll talk about somebody in the first person, then refer to himself. You know, it switches back and forth. It doesn't matter though. It's catchy. And really, that's, I mean, that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah, dig it. All right. Animal Fuck Like a Beast, written by Blackie Lawless, uh, was supposed to be the opening track, went on the 1998 reissue, uh, the first single in April 1984 in the UK. Um, <laughs> Blackie came up with the song title because he saw two lions mating. <laughs> As though some like oh you I know, saw grass over there and winds blowing so I came up with a song I saw two <laughs> lions fucking and I, <laughs> I actually I heard a, I heard him do an interview recently that said that he saw himself in the mirror during the act and then he made it rhyme. <laughs> That's what I'm I love it. I love it. Oh my god! Capital Records Whatever. was like. Drop the fucking song. It's not coming out. PMRC shit. Uh, the independent label Music for Nations released it in Europe, I guess. That's the name. Yep. At some point in 2006, uh, Blackie wouldn't play the song anymore because he became a Christian of some sort. Mm. But then he started playing it again now that he's come back in 2022. And I had it here, Tom, as you. I've got pictures of naked ladies <laughs> <laughs> on their beds. I wrote worst opening lyrics ever for a song ever for an album yep. and for a debut album and for any band in the history. It's, of I, it's gotta be, it's gotta be Look, this. Okay. So a lot of the lyrics here sound like a 13 year old boy wrote them. Totally. And, the whole and I've, got, not I've, got more, I've got more comments coming about oh, these Oh, me lyrics. too. Oh, I bet you do. We all, we all do. do. <laughs> that <laughs> opening lyric is done by Kevin Jepsen. Because that's the only person <laughs> I can think of that would write, oh, that's a great line. Yeah, I have fucking pictures of naked ladies too. I carry some in my car. There's some in my bed. There's some in my he phone. probably has some in his visor in his car. <laughs> hey, them down, they come yes. flying out. <laughs> fucking unbelievable quagmire fucking jepson he needs to have naked pictures. quagmire, quagmire <laughs> jepson, jepson. <laughs> anyways it just sounds like a typical hard rock song of the era it is not like something that if you never heard the band and you saw the image and you heard wasp that you're like that's wasp yep it completely right. you throw you off anyways right. there's something about blackie's voice I couldn't put my finger on it. I don't know if it sounds like at some point someone's he's gonna cough. Like, yeah. dude, <laughs> take, take take something for your throat, man. Guttural, it's guttural, guttural. Yeah, it's like, uh, like how can you continue to do that? It's gonna, something's gonna come out. Yeah, right. There's something yeah. off, and it just it, it kind of keeps you on your toe. But he can continue singing like that without sounding like he's losing. He lost his without him losing his voice because that's what yep. it sounds like. And yep. there was something else. That I couldn't figure it out. And literally on the last song on this album, in the last part of that song, I'm going to tell you what I, I'm like, that's it. What is because it? Because it fucking came to it. I'm going to, oh, you're going to wait. You're going to wait all right. until the last song we review on okay. this fucking album. Okay. All right. But I, I, there was a decent solo, and I just put down, this sounds like early Motley Crue. Would you totally. be surprised if Motley Crue sang this, if this was on Shout at the Devil or Too Fast yeah. for Love? Exactly. Not me. Yep. Yep. Could happen. All right. Well, yep. let's go to track number two. I want to be somebody. So this is a song that I've pretty familiar with just hearing it through the years. And again, Sirius XM, they play Wasp a lot. And this is one that I always go back to. Again, great production, aggressive, dark, heavy, but just super melodic, so, you know, super catchy, super hooky. 
corny, you know, I want to be somebody. I mean, you know, Paul Stanley wrote my way, but at least, you know, I mean, it, again, it, it, you go from animal fuck like a beast to, I want to be somebody. It's like this band has an identity crisis right now. They don't know what they want to do, but again, talk about a sing along chorus. I mean, mm-hmm. You can't, you can't, you can't deny the, the chorus. You can't deny the hook. And again, first of all, I, I didn't really talk too much about the band on, on the first song. The band sounds great. I mean, Chris Holmes, he can shred. He's got he's doing great solos. The drum, the band mm-hmm. sounds good. The band sounds good, which is uh, oh, I I see Tony making a face. I'm not saying <laughs> I'm not saying Chris Holmes is Warren D. Martini or George Lynch. I'm not saying no. that. I was just a little bit surprised by how good the band sounded together. But again, Blackie's voice, I, I'm I'm in on Blackie. Yeah, I mean, Okay, so this song is probably the one that I had heard the most from this record. Yep. To my dismay, because uh, honestly, <laughs> that chorus is just, it's, it's the not cheesiest. Good. You know, this is like, I, like you said, it's a little bit of identity crisis because they went from animal fuck like a beast to this water boy type anthem <laughs> chord, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> so, I mean, but it does stick in your head. Tailor made for audience participation. You oh, know what I mean? The a hundred percent, like I, I can listening to it. I can already visualize the entire crowd, especially when they do the breakdown, right? Just mm-hmm. singing this back, but it is a little repetitive for me. And it's just kind of, hmm. okay. Fair. Yeah. It's not a bad right. song and a catchy, yeah. but meh. Yeah. Okay. All right. I want to be somebody written by Blackie Lawless. I get a feeling when they finally got this record out, that Blackie had been building these songs up for years. And then he exactly. finally got a band together and go, let's put it out. And he was able to get the exact guitarist. He's done this a million times. He got the sound that he wanted. He got the lyric. Like, he already had this stuff. And I think they just went into the studio and put out the best that he could for this. So, I, I, I Tom, I didn't notice the production, to be honest with you. I wasn't super impressed. I, I didn't think it was bad. It didn't stick yeah. out for being bad. It's Never noticed it. But anyways, it's their first single. It went out to number 30 in the UK. It made it to number 84 on VH1's 100 Greatest Hard Rock Songs. Wow. Yikes. Simmer down. <laughs> wow. Um, Simmer down. <laughs> he said he got the this song. And then think about like how bad the Lions fucking was. Because he saw a Barney Miller episode, yep. And Detective Ron Harris says, "God, I want to be somebody." Dude, when you're getting your inspiration from Ow. Barney Miller, fish, fish, girl, fish from high school, Vagoda. <laughs> you. Anyways, you. um. Uh. It's so God, good. He can't, can't, can't put it into words. <laughs> but I Zeus, know. I think you're right. It's kind of what I've been saying. It's like a 13 year old boy wrote these lyrics. Yeah. And he I finally wrote... got a chance to put it out. Yep. By the way, the intro is poorly timed. If you listen to the drum, drum pattern, he's. it seems like he comes in the when he starts least. the first lyrics. Like in the between the drum pad, you gotta wait till he hits that last mm-hmm. boom, then go. Mm-hmm. Just listen to it. It seems like it's off because the next time, if you listen to the next line on the drum pattern, he stops. He does it correctly. It just mm-hmm. seems a little off. And I and if I'm picking up on that on timing, and I know <laughs> nothing about like music and instruments and shit, I'm like, that's a little off. Anyways, um, Tony, this is what I wrote. I'm sensing a pattern here. <laughs> <laughs> Horrendously bad lyrics to get me to the fist pumping stupid chorus. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's this whole album. Yeah. Stupid. You summed it up. Childish 13 right. year old lyrics. Yep. And then you get to a chorus with decent uh, music of the era, decent yeah. music playing instruments, totally. um, capable musicians. And then just get me to the chorus where you're pumping your fist. Yep. Mm-hmm. And to me, like, okay, that's kind of a two, one or two song filler songs on a rat album or maybe a docket album, mm-hmm. but not a whole fucking album of that shit. It's too formulaic. It's too like 
Yeah, but wait until the this next is song. The it gets shit a- that all our Patreon <laughs> people made us fucking listen to. Oh, like, it's I don't just like so generic. I don't like it's where we're sh- going with this. We're only two Uh-oh. songs in. I don't like where we're going. Uh-huh. Dude, wait, it- Zeus, wait until the next song. It gets better. I promise. Yes. <laughs> oh, no, I'm not done. Uh, I know you're not. <laughs> and it says one point I'm <laughs> never getting old. Really? Whatever. Right into a decent solo. Meanwhile, he's like 80, still playing. Um, then he, they go into the 80s. You give love a bad name where the drums and the chorus yep. that Tony had talked about shot through the heart and the drums yep. and the chorus go. It's <laughs> such an 80s cliche thing. And and by the end of the song, they've said the fucking phrase, I'm uh, going to oh, be somebody. So I want to I- say to him, we fucking get it. You're going to be somebody. No, you want to no. be it. Yeah, enough, dude. He must say that fucking line a hundred times. Yep. Yeah, that's why it's, I can't it's, listen it's, to this It's one. fucking painful. Uh. And, you know, I can totally picture our friends, and, you know, he's going to get mad. Like Steve Wright being, yeah, what are you talking about? The song <laughs> rocks. And being, like, right there on the fucking more cruise, like, f- pumping his fist and, and just being like, dude, it's... Change the fucking chorus title to song three chorus title. F- song four. It's the same fucking thing over and over again. Like there's no different type of vibe or guitar solo, or melodic thing that a George Lynch can throw out in and, and melodies and stuff. It just seems so formulaic. Anyways, there is a video for this shit that is going to fucking maybe beat Rod Stewart's fucking hot legs video for the worst <laughs> video. Of all time on this show. It, Anybody want to start? It, it, yeah, Tony, go ahead. Go ahead. You you jump in here on this one. I mean, <laughs> God, where do you start with this one? I mean, wow. The, uh, the thing that always has caught my attention is the bow-legged poses. Yes! Oh, yeah. That, 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 that looks like they're about to drop a deuce. He's yeah. trying to be, then, he's trying to be early 70s Gene with the way he's standing. Right, yeah, but they're they all, all do that. It. The rhythm guitar does it too. Yep, they, yep. The it's bow crazy. like on a horse stance. Yep. Yeah, fuck is that? I what think they just doing? try. I, th- I think they think it makes them look like more like beastly, menacing. Like, 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 they like look like menacing, like a menacing sister fucking yeah. logo. Yep, yep. yep. That's yeah. what they look like. Yep. Uh, yeah, by the yeah. way, this video has every cliche you can think of of the era. Oh, it's like it's like an AI generated hair metal video. Fog machine. No, the fog machine. They make scary faces into the camera. Oh, I'm a tough guy. The spikes um, on the the spikes, the saw blades, the fucking. Oh, oh the guitar is chugging a beer. Oh, he's crazy. Oh. Yeah, what is that? They're, 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 they're crushed it. Yeah, yeah. I mean they're, they're, oh. Oh, the whole so the whole tough. the whole band is performing, and then the camera goes to Chris Holmes, and he's like he's at like Canopy Lake Park drinking a beer in front of like this where is, is he? Sandman from fucking uh, ECW wrestling chugging a beer, smashing off his head. What does that have anything to do with? And and clothes that make Gene Simmons blush. Like, what the fuck is those outfits? It just... This is something that bugs me about seeing them perform. Mm. And I never realized this, and this is just me. I don't know. I'm curious to hear what you guys think. Yeah. I don't like a bassist that plays the way he plays the bass. Being in the middle and the lead singer, I think it looks awkward. Okay, I love Gene over the to right, the side. Yeah, over to the side, drumming his bass and playing hard. Yeah, as the singer, I don't want the bass player being the lead singer in the front in the yeah. middle. I don't think it looks good with him. I don't think it looks good with Kip Winger. I think it looks stupid. I want the yeah, fucking I, band. I, 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 I just what, think it looks terrible, and him just fucking shaking and playing a, a bass that looks like a fucking rhythm guitarist. I agree. Um, it does. Yeah, it doesn't look like a bass. It doesn't look good. It doesn't yeah. like him trying to. Because every other time, I'm like, he's not even playing it. How is this? And he's singing and just it throws it off. Like I'm like, he's isn't he supposed to be playing the bass? He does. Yeah, he's just, it's just awkward. Well, to be fair, he was a rhythm guitar player before yes. he switched to bass. And yeah, yeah. And, and I'm and, and I'm sure right. he was when he played with Nikki Six, right? Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. because he came to this band, he's like, oh, I got, I can get a guitarist. I'd rather go to the bass then. That's fucking yeah. easy. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, it does look. It does look weird. Yeah. yeah. How did this video not escape? Like escape? Excuse me, Beavis and Butthead. I'm shocked they didn't. We have attack. to. I, I don't know. I, I can't believe it either because this is this is tailor made for Beavis and Butthead. Oh my god! 
And yeah. then they have like those fucking baseball catcher fucking pads, knee pads on. Oh, I love that. Those, those, yeah, like he went to sports, et cetera, to buy fucking, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. fucking shin guards. It was like, big sporting goods. Yeah. You got any fucking black knee pads? More like, like, they robbed like, a high yeah. school. Yeah. yeah, right, right. And then there's a close up of Blackie's face, lip syncing yeah. terrible at one oh, yeah, point. Of the song. Yeah. I, I put what's up with the bow legged stance. Uh, oh. oh, here's a video of a limo. Then with a limo full of sluts, money, oh. and booze. It's like the most. It's just like I said. It's like AI generated '80s hair metal shit. Yeah. And do you see the platform that they're on? And they yeah. jump on the plat. There's no way one of them didn't fucking wipe. There's no way <laughs> jumping from platform to platform in those fucking high heel boots and shit. They didn't fucking wipe wipe out. No way. And just when you think it can't get worse, I put, they try to pull off a sure no something. Yeah, I saw that too. Terrible. They're mm. fucking all the camera, faces, the, fo- the, faces. the headshots yeah. go yep. to the camera. Yeah. It's not a live like Gene and Paul and the Kiss one was, but they put the fucking head faces, the headshots coming up to the camera like some sure no something from not Dynasty good. kind of shit. Oh my God, that was fucking terrible. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just. Then there's a shot of them, like all four of them with no instruments, head banging and fist pumping. Ah, one of the whole okay, cake. That guys. reminded me of like a Twisted Sister or Quiet Riot yeah. video. I can't remember. I, yeah. With yeah the, I very, it's, very it's Twisted, Twisted Sister. sister. Yeah. We're yeah. not going to yes. take yes. it. Going yep. down the stairs and all yep. of them just pumping so their fists. So awkward. Like, yep. Yep. That's so what awkward. this was. Um, And just... And then Blackie lights the uh, the wasp sign behind him, which I thought was you know pretty cool and stuff. It's kind of cool. It's kind of um, cool. I'm a big fan yeah. of that. <laughs> and he does that fucking crazy head spin with yep. the mm. Cliff Burton thing, where fucking I don't know who came up with that first, but that Blackie does it pretty fucking good. I'll give him credit. He's At like a bobblehead. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. He, he's got to top it off with picking up the skull with the blood, and then the blood drips in his face and mouth. Hey, for that era, it was badass. Now it's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> this has every cliche. There, like, oh yeah, we but only have one shot to make a video. Throw the throw everything in it. Yep, with exactly. tough guys, we drink beer. We got yep. chicks in limos with with booze. We got bloody skulls. We got fire. We got, we got saw yeah, blades. Exactly. We got fucking you name it. Yeah, I love it. <laughs> why can't why? How can you not love it? <laughs> fucking ridiculous. All right, wow. let's, we're only on to song three. Well, speaking of loving it, what about L O V E machine? I mean, God damn it! <laughs> Again, I—I I mean, honestly, it's almost like just hit repeat of our comments on "I Want to Be Somebody." Melodic song, Blackie you sounds guys, great. Hey, hey, you and Patreon, you guys asked for this. You're getting it. I'm not done talking about this album. I, I'm still going here, but but again, well, this is song three. Just a terrible, <laughs> terrible. Why are you spelling love? Why is it L dot O dot V? Why just L O? And and if you thought he said I want to be somebody a hundred times, <laughs> he said L O V E machine two hundred times in this song. But again, say ditto, ditto to again melodic, stupid chorus, repetitive. But I, but I can't get out of my head. I can't get out of my head. Everything you said is accurate, but I fucking love this song. Me too. It's it's just you know, look. First of all, you don't hear very many songs fade in, which is awesome. Yes, which was awesome. I loved it that it was all just kind of that that drum just kind of. It's, it was almost like revving uh, uh, well, a machine. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, I think the the verses were great. The chorus, I mean, sure, simpleton shit, but that's that's what he does, you know. Um, but it's just so catchy. Yeah, Agreed. so catchy. Every yeah. part of the song is melodic and catchy, yep. except for the guitar solo. I think the guitar solo is complete shit. <laughs> but but um, I love there, there's several yeah there's several times where I'm like oh god what who yeah. gave this guy a guitar that's I was like that's probably why I don't like this band is because I was Chris listening Holmes to sucks. Lynch you know I was lucky yeah. listening to Lynch and Demartini and the guys from Striper yep and then there's these guys I mean they're <laughs> these guys P- P- Piper and uh Holmes they're fine they're fine yeah. guitar players but not exactly like they don't have that that touch and that feel 
that melodic sensibility about them yep. where you are, you instantly know Lynch, you know, you instantly know when it's Demartini, mm-hmm. this, anybody could be doing this. Yep. And some of like, some of these solos sound like a 13 year old was playing it. Like, you know what I mean? First <laughs> yep. guitar solo. We, yeah. we, 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 oh my God. <laughs> you remind but, me to tag anyways, him in this. <laughs> yeah. Oh, tag the fuck out of them. <clears throat> Hey, you know what? Listen, I ran into Chris Holmes on 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 more the street corner. Okay. Yeah, uh, no, it was in the it was in the bar, but um, <laughs> of course, yeah, he walked past us, and you know, it's telling Sunny, I was like, "Geez, he looks like shit," and he goes, "Who looks like shit?" I said, "Chris Holmes." He goes, "That's Chris Holmes." Yeah, wow, you you would not know. I mean, he looked okay. horrible, but like, Sunny ran into him later. And he's like, oh, Chris Holmes, da, 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 da. and then uh, the lady he was with, I guess his wife or something, goes, oh, do you want to take a picture with him? And he's like, no, I'm good. Wow. <laughs> okay. Wow. <laughs> but listen, he was super, super nice, very gracious, very happy yeah. to talk to people, you know. Um, and we saw him play, and uh, he didn't get any better. I'll just tell you that much. <laughs> yeah, I saw recently, I think, Blackie Lawless, because he was in the news because he shit on Kiss about something Chris Holmes recently. And then I just saw something about mm. Blackie Lawless or shitting on him. Like he can't fucking, like he can't, he's like Mick Mars to, uh, to, uh, Blackie. Like he can't keep up. I can't have him in the band. He sucks. Like he yep. can't do yep. that shit anymore. I yep. don't know. What the- Anyways, L O V E machine. Blackie Lawless wrote this. I wrote the same thing. Here we go. Horrendous lyrics, same formula, <laughs> bad lyric versus get me to the repetitive chorus. <laughs> Just in case you didn't know, all he needs is his love machine. I love it. I love it. The only thing I said other than that was I I realized the drums on this song are pretty good. Yes. Yep. Mm. I don't know it almost sounded like a drum machine, but. Yeah. I don't know what you anyway. want to say about the song. I mean, it's no different than the previous one. Again, yep. I would say these songs aren't bad. Yep. They're just Fucking paint by number, fucking cliche stuff. Yep. Okay. The fact that yep. it's in my head, I don't know if that's a positive thing or a negative thing, but they do say, yep. I know this is a running theme. I'm going to say about all these songs. Tell me in the middle how these songs go. I have no idea. Tell me the chorus. I go, oh, yeah. L O B E. Yep. yep. I want to be. I, I know all these choruses, mm-hmm. which is actually brilliant on their part. That's actually kind of brilliant. Any, on their how part. the songs. I don't know how the rest yep. of the songs go yep. or the middle, the beginning or any of that, but I know the yep. choruses. Anyways, there is a video for this shit. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, Lord Jesus. So this one is a couple like ending a date and the guy tries to go in for the kiss and she's like, yeah, see you later. And gives him the Heisman. She goes in, <laughs> lies down, passes out. And in a dream sequence or something, her body wakes up and there's these torn slut nurses that look like they came out of Ace Fraley's insane video. Oh, and they good drag her in <laughs> to a, like a uh, like, you know a performance video for Wasp, and Blackie's like singing to a fucking I don't know magic eight ball or something, and then she's in one that shit that she's in like that water thing like Luke is in in Empire Strikes Back. Yeah, she's in like a like a fucking Bantha water bath, like a water t- yeah. Up. Like that yeah. Luke is in in Empire Street when they yeah. they find like, him. Uh, off. Yeah, I'm like I'm like, how did we get here? How did she end up with that thing? <laughs> and, the- and then all like the nurses, slut ones are like doing calisthenics or something in the background. Some of them's on the uneven bars. It's like them. a it's like a weird. <laughs> you know what it is? It's almost like somebody combined a wasp video and it's like, hey, Kiss is doing uh, all night over here. Why don't oh, you oh, just no. jump in? It's like. Oh, Olivia Newton John just finished doing physical. Physical. Video. Let's take some of the equipment and bring it over here and have these nurses on the the equipment. It's so random. I don't get it. Uh, it's it's a all fucked up place. Fucking yeah. stupid. Yeah. It's so fucking stupid. Blackie does his head spin again. Um, they just the girls are sitting and stretching on st- stretchers. I'm like, what the fuck am I watching here? That's oh, bizarre. Paid for this video. Yeah. Again, throwing everything against the wall for the 80s. Hot chicks, sex, you know, lingerie, friggin' water tanks, I guess. <laughs> that's your thing. <laughs> Those chicks look like porn chicks from the fucking oh, 80s. They probably, they probably are. Yeah. They probably oh, yeah. are. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Anyway, let's go to song number four. Only on four. Good Lord. Well, because we talked about two horrendous videos. So. Right. 
All right. Song four. So for me, I liked the first three songs. They were cheesy, corny, catchy, paint by numbers. To me, this is where the album hits the ground running for me, because I think the flame is of absolutely fucking unbelievable track on this album. Okay. I don't know how this wasn't a hit. I th- I feel like this song should have been a hit. I love I, the, 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 the tempo of this song, the drums, this sounds like something that could have been on shout of the devil. Blackie is wailing his balls off in this song. It's got a, another melodic kind of gang vocal sing along chorus, but it's not as cheesy or corny as I want to be somebody or love machine. I, I, I just, th- I think this song crushes and I think it's, it's, it's more of what I like. It's just verse, chorus, verse, heavy, thunderous drums, great melody, you know, great kind of, I, I'm on board with Blackie's vocals. So right now he hit vocally, he can't miss for me, but I think this song kind of is, is stands out from the, the first three tracks in my opinion. And I think it just kills. Yeah, I mean, this one sounds like 18-year-old Blackie, right? Exactly. It's more mature. Yeah. It's not like super mature, but it's yeah. more mature. It's, yeah. it's it. I, I have to agree with you. Like, I, this is where I was like, okay, okay, okay. Like, I really missed out on this record yep. because this is a great song. Yeah. The riff is super simple, but all the melodies are great. The chorus is great. I loved everything about it except for the shit guitar solo. Um, <laughs> absolute shit guitar solo. Um, at least the first half is bad. Um, but outside of that, um, uh, this is a really, really good one. Um, yeah. you know, I told my, uh, I told my buddy Danny that, um, that I was going to be doing this review and he said, that's one of my top, top 10 albums of all time or whatever. And I said, wow. really, there's some clunkers on that one though. And he goes, Oh, the flame. And I'm like, <gasps> what? What? <laughs> wow. I said, no, not wow. that one. No, there are so clunkers now you on know there. that the rest oh, of the album They're coming, but it's not. It's the opposite. This one. Yeah. If, if you think the oh, flame is a clunker, shit. wow. Interesting. Yeah. Hi, that's what I said. I was like, what? That's like one of the best songs on the record. Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, well, gave that away. But anyway. That's okay. That's okay. All right. The Flame, written by Blackie Lawless, Chris Holmes, Jay Marquez. Do you think the fact that this is the first time I added extra names on the yes. songwriting? Yes, that matters. Mm-hmm. Mm, there's a little bit mm-hmm. difference in this song. Totally. The song yeah. sounds a little bit more mature. Like somebody else's eyes got on this and it was like, you know what? We can add this. Maybe if you did this, maybe if you did this, you notice how the, the, although the, although the title, you, it sticks in your head, that chorus, it's not as repetitive as the other ones. That's right. Yep. Right. Totally. Until yeah. the flame burns. Yep. Right? It's not they mm-hmm. do a couple times. It's not that bad. I, I just wrote this is some some way more melodic than the other ones. It's got better verses and a great little chorus, a nice bridge into the solo. I'm like, this mm-hmm. is a really good song. Yep. Then that's just it. It's a good song. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It doesn't need schlock, stupid fucking over the top, mm-hmm. crazy, dumb lyrics and stuff. It's just a good song. And I'm like, oh, they have it in them. And it's not written for a 14 year old. Who knows what we're going to get the rest of the album. But yeah, this one is definitely a standout <laughs> track for all of us. It looks like, right? I'm, I'm laughing because we get it. <laughs> well, cause, just, just because now <laughs> fucking Michael Jackson's I'm bad is up next, I guess. I don't know. B-A-D bad. <laughs> Make your mom and daddy <laughs> sad. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I mean, we were talking about thirteen-year-old Blackie Lawless. This is eight-year-old Blackie Lawless. What mm. are we? What are we doing here? What happened to the flame? How do we go? Okay, I- I'll start with the good. I like the tempo. The bridge is kind of cool, but that chorus. B A D bad. Make your mom and daddy. What? I, I, I can't. I can't. This is so B A D bad. What the fuck are you guys doing here? God, you, you, you were four, four songs in. I was like, okay, I like this. It's it's of the time. It's uh-huh. simple. 
It's I don't need it to be Rush or some froggy. This is just fun eighties <laughs> melodic rock. And then you drop this turd on me, and I'm like, God damn it! I'm just getting hard to defend you guys. Yeah, my my first note literally was this chorus is B A D bad. <laughs> oh my god! Good lord. <laughs> The fuck is this shit? <laughs> Holy shit. This is why we oh, wanted to. Am I right? Am I right on this, Tony? Before you say anything further. Yeah, go. This for is it. the first time all of us heard this song, correct? Yeah. Oh, me. Okay, yeah. So yeah. Good. Oh, yeah. So this is very organic. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I mean, I, that's why I was like, uh, I'm sorry. You thought the flame was a clunker? Right. Holy sh- Did you get past that one? Did right, maybe he was the last there? song you, yeah, right. you, you only listened to the first. Because <laughs> holy shit, I mean, it starts out with a nice little mid-tempo, not yeah. just the riff, the verses, and the pre-chorus are okay. Yeah. But Jesus Christ, that <laughs> chorus comes in, and oh my God. Aptly titled. Yeah, Aptly really, titled. Really. All right. Bad, B-A-D. Uh, Blackie Lawless wrote this. If you listen to the guitar and the tone, I'm like, this sounds like it came off of L.A. Guns' first album. Yeah, oh, you can that definitely crunch it, that yeah. crunchy kind of guitar. It seemed like a little sleaze guitar type of song. I don't know. I was like, okay, this song's not bad, so right? But P.A.D. Bad. Make oh. your mom and daddy sad. What the fuck? He ain't he bad. It's oh. the bloody fix you do. Oh. <laughs> as an adult, as an adult, how can you sing that with a straight face and oh. try and look all menacing? Oh, Tony, Are you shitting me. Tony, we're not done with the album yet. Oh, you, uh, you're going to be saying just- that again. The lyrics. Oh, trust me, like they will definitely be saying that. The, they took like so many big steps forward with the flame. Yeah, and that's right. They took like five yeah. steps back with this. Yeah. The lyrics yeah. are just these lyrics. The people that like this shit are the people that find like Ace Freely lyrics <laughs> too intellectual. Ju- right? Juvenile delinquent is like, stay away to heaven. <laughs> Yeah, oh like, my God. like, oh God. like lyrics like that. It's like, oh, that's for smart people. I want simple shit. Well, like, here you go. Listen, <laughs> Ace writes fucking poetry compared to this shit. <sighs> this is horrendous, horrendous. Anyway, let's it doesn't get he's, better. <laughs> he's singing about school now. Let's let's go to the next track. School days. When your song opens up with a young girl doing the Pledge of Allegiance, <laughs> you are fucked. It's over before it even starts. The only thing I will say this: if this song pretend is pretend there's no lyrics, okay, and somebody plays you the the piece of music, I'm like, okay, '80s hard rock. It's kind of got a little bit of balls to it. It's okay. Again, this is written for like a ten year old kid who hates going to school, like. The lyrics, like like you said, as a gr- you thought B A D as a gr- as an how is Blackie Lola singing this now? This is the vibe of the song again. Musically, you try to separate your, yourself from the lyrics, which is hard because the lyrics are so laughable. The song, I I can I can I I can enjoy the song from that aspect, but you know the gang you know, school days. I'm like oh. God almighty, I, I'm, I'm a grown man. I have to, I can't, I have to switch this. I'm getting embarrassed of myself. <laughs> yeah. I mean, first of all, did we really need the entire Pledge of Allegiance? <laughs> right. The whole thing. Exactly. The whole friggin' thing. Can you like give us a couple lines, fade it out, bring the song in? Or actually, maybe they were doing us a favor and delaying the start of this god awful <laughs> piece of shit song. <laughs> This is <laughs> this one sucks. Absolutely <laughs> terrible. The chorus is horrendous. Everything about this fucking song is just I, I can't I can't deal with it. The bridge is the best part, and yes. that ain't saying much. That yep. is not saying much at all. Yep. Because the lyrics again are stupid. Oh, painful. But the melody of the bridge was like, hey, that that part's pretty catchy. Yeah, exactly. But I'm like, oh god, this is just stupid. So again, 13 year old Blackie. You know, so I mean, we went from what a love being a love machine that fucks like a beast to whining about going to school. 
just what, brutal. Where, where did we go? Where did, yeah. where did we go wrong on this record? <laughs> the flame must have burned out because yeah. oh. it just went straight <laughs> down the crapper after that. <laughs> School days written by Blackie Lawless. Yeah, I had, you know, obviously the Pledge of Allegiance. You can't, you got to mention him. Like, school shit can be cool. Chuck Berry wrote it in the 1950s, and those lyrics are fucking like Beethoven is to me playing the piano. And that was from the 50s. And, you know, Alice Cooper did a good version of school stuff. There's always the Ramones. There's a a bunch of school shit. This is literally on it. I mean, my honest opinion is. Somebody put the three of us in detention and said, all right, you guys have an hour of detention. I need you to write lyrics to a song about school like this. Yeah. And the three of them, all right, um, my math grade is bad. Yeah, that'll make my mom sad. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Um, I hate homeroom. Yeah. They make me clean up with a broom. Okay, that's good. That's good. TikTok it's like three. Mad Libs for fucking morons you you mean tiktok three o'clock exactly i don't want to sound like a snob like a music snob but yeah, i I'm, get it like, i feel like i'm a rolling stone editor like this is fucking just no other way to describe it other than just stupid that's it <laughs> Stupid. The lyrics are stupid. However, just like murder in high heels sticks in my head. Yep. And I look for that. This song grew on me because it no. is so horrendously bad. Yes. I, when the song would come up on the rotation, it's like a I car would accident. Laugh at it. Yes. I would laugh at it. I enjoy it. And I really enjoy musically that fucking bridge. Yep. The way he goes into mm. it. The lyrics are beyond stupid again. Stupid. But yeah. the bridge was very melodic. And mm-hmm. I really enjoyed it. And the chorus isn't that bad. School days. But it's just, it's hard. It's one of those things like if my kid and her friends got in the car and I was listening to this, <laughs> practice, turn it like, off. To try to learn it, I would be scrambling. The fuck with my iPhone. Oh, quick, turn this off. Because they'd probably be like, what the fuck is wrong with your dad listening to this? <laughs> You're like, is your dad listening to School Days by Wasp? <laughs> is that what this special needs orchestral choir had to sing a song? Is that what you're playing? <laughs> nice. Uh, oh, hey, man. Patreon people, you asked for this. You're getting it. That's right. All right. Let's flip this vinyl over to side two. Whew, we're getting through. Let's go. All right. First song on side two, Tom. All right, so we're at Hellion right now. Now, for me, I feel like the album grew up a little bit in terms of maturity when you flip the album, okay? Because now you're getting into, like, the like the heavy, uh, violent, quote-unquote, like, aggressive, like, you know, the, the shit that you think the album cover dictates when you listen to it. So Hellion right here, now we're back. Okay, school days is over. BAD is over. <laughs> this this is what I want more of right here. Great intro here. The song kicks in. It's a, it's fast paced, but it's got a nice chug and riff there. Blackie again is howling his balls off, and then you get to the chorus and the way he just sings the word hellion, and of course the lyrics. It's it's painting a cool picture. It's kind of badass for the era. Again, you know, it's corny. It's eighty shit, but I think this song. I think. I think it's a really, for me, a nice rebound from those two piles of shit that we just dealt with. Hellion, I think, is is really, really a cool song. Yeah, I mean, this one is pretty much what I would expect from a band that looks like Wasp does. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? Yep. It's cool, it's fast, it's aggressive, but they still manage to keep it melodic. Um, it's not one that I walk around humming by any stretch. Right. But it's it, it's it's a pretty damn good song. I like the pace. Um, it's simple. The riffs are actually all their riffs are simple, um, but it's cool. That that chorus is just like you said. He's howling his balls off. Yeah, I, don't I know, love There's it. no other way to say it. Yep. All right, Hellion, written by Blackie Lawless. I said I thought this song sounded like Cinderella's Hell on Wheels, uh, although this song came out first. Um, all right, it's not as 
stupid and sophomoric as the other songs, <laughs> but it's very. I feel like these are this is the song, and they think it's so badass. Let's put his opening fucking song on side two. Yeah, yeah. It, it would be a throwaway song on a Doc and a Rat album. I don't know about that. Oh, I, to I, me, I, it would be. I, I, I don't just, know. Say it. It's just. There's okay. nothing to it. It's not very catchy. There's nothing really great. It's nothing. It's not terrible, but it's just there. Okay. Okay. It's not. It's not lost behind the wall. I mean, oh, that's a great hey, song. Hey, 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 I yes. know. I'm teasing. It, it is a great song. <laughs> don't simmer I, down. I don't, yeah. don't worry. Back, back to the attack has no <laughs> skips. I get it. I get it. All right. But I'm just like this. It's. I, I poor Steve Wright. This is the Why are we piling on like Steve Wright? <laughs> he doesn't even do is, anything. Because <laughs> I always just feel like he likes everything. Like you should be making fun of me because I like this album so far. So but you should I'm be piling like, on me. They, like, I need like something that like sound like a, a Dawkins, George Lynch, or a Warren or a Rat, like something melodic, or the best that Warren has, or the best song that Poison can come up with. Okay, something where is a generic doc and war and rat song move me. Like this is just okay. All right. It's it's nothing spectacular. See, I I'm I'm surprised by that because I I feel like it's I feel like this song again, it's not a it's it's not a quote unquote great song, but I feel like it fits in with every other band. Yeah, because it's not jo- good. It's no, good. no, it's no, 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 decent. But I'm saying it fits in with all the other stuff that we like. So I I mean, I'm I I mean, I'm not going to go to war defending I have a, this I have album. A, I, I know. I have a comment about that. I want to do no, it at the go, end when this album okay, goes okay. through. Yep, like, go ahead. Okay. And it's just something that... Uh, yeah, I we'll do final final thoughts. Yeah. I get it. So, I mean, again, not bad. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Let's, uh, let's go to the next song. Okay. Sleeping in the Fire. Uh, we're now time for the ballad, which everybody did at this time. Although this is kind of early. 84 for the ballad. I'm going to tell you right now, look, I like Blackie's voice. I think this song... Shows that he can sing, he can carry a tune. He's got that wailing, like kind of powerful voice that carries through. I had never heard this ballad before in my life before I got this album. And I'm if this came out two or three years later, I think this probably could have had a little steam behind it because it's a it's a power ballad. I like it. I, I, there's a lot of we could do a whole fucking episode on power ballads. Most of them are absolutely horrendous and corny and formulaic. I think for the era, I think this one's pretty good. I like it. Yeah. Oh, boy. Here we go. No, go Um, ahead. Go ahead. Come on. uh, (laughs) Fire away, baby. (laughs) You know, the song starts and I'm thinking, holy shit. Are we actually going to get a freaking Blackie Lawless singing a ballad? How the hell is he going to pull this shit off? Surely it's just a slow intro and then it's going to pick up. But then it never picked up. And I was like, holy shit, it's a fucking ballad. What the fuck is going on? But I got to say, he did pull it off. Yeah. I, I think he really pulled it off. I was like, how is this guy with that voice Me too. do I, a ballad? Yep, I you agree. Know? But I think it was very smart because he didn't do it as, you know, the normal, you know, every rose has a thorn, lovey-dovey, you know. It was, he took a little bit of a different route with it, subject matter-wise, and yeah. I think it was very smart. It it was fitting. I think his voice actually fit the song quite well. Mm-hmm. Um, I do find myself singing this one, walking around. You know, yeah. it has stuck in my head. It's not your typical power ballad lyrics, like I said, but, uh, you know, it, it, it worked for him. And what did he say? She's drunk on what? Uh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <drunk on cock? laughs> um, but if you listen to it it's very reminiscent of screaming in the night by crocus yes but it's way better than that <laughs> or my, my same opinion. in my opinion Dude, what are we doing really when like we're comparing that. songs to but, crocus hey oh. that's a good song though screaming in the night but it's oh. the same feel it's the same tempo it's even got the same uh drum beat and it, you can actually sing screaming in the night chorus over this one and it totally works um yes i did it i tried it it works yep. um but yeah i i mean I, I really i gosh i really like this one i hate to say that but i really like that i like a wasp ballad but yeah. there it is man it, it okay. i really like this one like zeus said it matured or actually it might have been you like the side started to mature a bit yep when it started so two songs in a little bit more mature than uh the 13 year old blackie yep 
All right, Sleeping in the Fire, written by Blackie Lawless. I, and I had the same thing, Tony. I went, Ballad? Question mark. Ooh, sensitive Ooh. Blackie. <laughs> sensitive uh, I, Blackie. Think the, I think the harmonies are fantastic in the chorus. Yeah, they the, are. The backing vocals and stuff, yep. the gang vocals and stuff. I think they're great. As much as I really wanted to like them, these lyrics are so pedestrian. <laughs> I honestly felt like I could have written them. I I don't want my songs written by people that can't write better than me. I, you have to be a better songwriter than me. I honestly think I could do just as good as him, if not better. This is horrible. But the song is good. Very good. I like it. I think it, it works. I think finally, although the solos weren't bad, I'm not going to be as bad as uh, on them as Tony is. I thought this was their best solo. I thought it was very melodic. Finally, yeah. um, a solo with some touch. I yeah, agree. I felt like I agree with there that. was a little bit of touch yeah. on this. And uh and it goes right into the repetitive soul uh chorus. I thought the song really stood out. Now, if they had this and the flame and songs up to that level, yeah, I, I get it. But there's too many just bringing them down shit. Let's find out. There's only a couple more tracks left. Let's see where this goes. On your knees. Okay. Again. I, I love that we're kind of all over the place with this review because to me, I, I wanted more of this on this album, like a song like the flame. I, I, I could see Zeus's shock and surprise. I'm actually glad. I'm glad that we're, that we don't agree on all this. I fucking love that. I think this song absolutely pummels. I love this song. The lyrics of course are stupid because anytime you start a lyric with mom and daddy said the life that you've led, you will party your way straight to hell. All right. I don't care about the lyrics. Look, we listen to Kiss, so yeah, let's be serious about shitting on lyrics. I'm yeah. not going to get into the business of that. I like this song. I think it it's it's an, it's a nice upper tempo. It's not slow. It's a nice recovery from sleeping in the fire. I th- the chorus there really isn't one. It's just repeating on your knees a hundred times. But I love the I love the vibe, the groove of it. And again, Blackie sounds great. I love the song. Yeah. All right. Enough with the mushy sensitivity shit. Let's get back to the yeah. sex. Um, yeah. Actually, again, like you, I like I like that they followed up the ballad with a fast paced sex charge song. It, it yep. only made sense because how else are they going to rebound out of that one? You know, just to make sure you guys don't lose sight of who we are. Let us remind you, you know, uh, it's simple, straight ahead. No frills gets to the point. Um, and the course is really super repetitive, like you just said. But I kind of like it. Nice. You know, I got to admit that. It's kind of weird as a songwriter myself, as a musician. Um, there you, go. <laughs> you are one. You, are, you actually, you can actually I say actually, that, Tony, and mean it. Yes, I can. But as a songwriter, I mean, I write most of the lyrics for for Restrained. And the funny thing is, when I'm listening to music, ninety percent of the time, I have no idea what the hell they're saying. But yeah. if the the melody's catching me and the music is catching me and it's performed well. That's all I care about. I don't even care what they're talking about most no. of the time, yeah. you know, and You're that's right. why I, I kind of get on my own case about that because I spend way too much time trying to make sure the lyrics make too much sense. Yeah. And, and, and you know what I mean? You get too smart. Like, like s- settle down. Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I mean, and this is, this is a settle down right here. Cause I mean, that, he clearly didn't think too much about it. And, uh, what the fuck was that? What? <laughs> he says that at the end of the song. Oh. <laughs> what the fuck was that? Yeah. What was that? I don't know. <laughs> that was shit. Is what it was. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, fuck oh. it. Keep it anyway. I, I feel like you're like predisposed to not like anything because it's Wasp and because it's Patreon. Dude, I had cassettes. Of, <laughs> I, I, I owned Wasp stuff. Before, that's not it at all. This is black, written by Blackie Law on your news. This is what you call a repetitive chorus on your knees. Oh, really? I bet he could write a hundred songs just like this and sound no different. Mm-hmm. And I bet he they have, and they're all sprinkled out throughout Wasp is fucking. It's just so <laughs> fucking generic. I. It's just so fucking the same old thing. Give me something. Stop and go music or something. It's just the same old shit. Stupid lyrics, 
chorus on your knees, on your knees. I, I'm I, like, I'm like, I'm becoming a person I hate, like those Rolling Stone critics that think like this is fucking childish. Give a fuck. You're right. We do listen to Kiss lyrics, but Kiss lyrics work with great songs, and they're kind of funny a little at some point. They're not as bad as this, and. You know, at the end when he says that, literally, I wrote it, you know, as you as you can hear Blackie say, what the fuck is that? I'm like, yeah, no shit. What the fuck is that? It's the same old shit you've been doing for the fucking previous eight songs. Just, ow, nothing bad. But I was, oh, Wasp. You got to hear Wasp debut album. All of us, Wasp, Wasp. This? Like, I didn't miss out on fucking Under Lock and Key or Out of the Cellar that I never heard. And then I'm like, what the fuck? How did I miss out on this? This I, is I, what I missed out on? I, this is, I'm like blown away. For a guy that's like a 80s hair metal, like hard exactly. rock guy, like, I, I can't exactly. believe. Exactly. And I'll still give you my, I have it written down. I'm going to bring it up after yeah. the end of, when we come back. And I, yeah. I want to make a point of this. Okay. And I'll answer what I think you're trying to say. But let's uh, let's get tormented some more. <laughs> Tormentor. First of all, you, you got to, I mean, you're starting off with the sounds of chains and you're going to be tormented here. So, all right, I'm in. I'm stupid. I'm simple minded. <laughs> I'm into this. Okay. The band kicks in heavy, slow, humbling music. Blackie is singing his, I'm a liar and I'm a cheat. I have no morals and I'm a thief. All right. Look, I'm stupid. I'm into it. Okay. I can flip my brain on and off and I can listen to Zeppelin. I can listen to Rush. I can listen to Steely Dan. I can listen to Wasp and want to hear somebody crank chains and sing about being tormented. I like it. I'm into it. The solo is kind of cool. This could have been a shout at the devil demo that Motley Crue could have done. I just like the music and I'm sorry. I've said it since song one. When you can pull me in with your vocals, I'm pretty much going to like almost anything you sing. And I'm a fan of Blackie's vocals. And so it's not a great song. It's definitely not one that I go to, but it, it it's okay. It's not terrible. Yeah. And I mean, at this point in the record, you definitely know what you're going to expect going into this song. Right. Right. At least I felt, I felt I did, you know, yeah. uh, it's another simple straight ahead rock song. The intro to me felt like early maiden. Oh, okay. Um, you can hear, yeah, you can hear the kind you, of. You uh, get that? You uh, know what I mean? Uh, what do you call it? The um, the horse thing, the fucking galloping kind of Gallop? rhythm. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Um, and I think it's really, really clever. Wow. I actually said wasp and clever. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the way they ran the verse into the chorus since Tormentor ends, Tormentor yep. ends with Tor and it starts with Tor. It ran over each other and for a seamless transition, and I thought that was actually pretty cool. Um, overall, this one, I think the verses are uh, pretty weak. Yeah, and the chorus is okay. I think this mm-hmm. one's an okay one. Uh, you know, the, it's okay to have filler songs. Yeah, but like you said, I'm not seeking this one out ever. But if it comes on on shuffle, I'll probably listen to it. Okay. All right, so Tormentor is written by Blackie Lawless, Chris Holmes. I, uh, I, I'm with you. It's not bad, but it's still pretty, pretty stupid. Uh, like the, the lyrics are just where we've been throughout this. It's just, I didn't think the lyrics were that bad until I fucking listened to the lyrics, listened to the songs for the first time today while reading the lyrics. Before that, I just thought a lot of this stuff was like, I can hear the music, I can hear the music. But when you read the mu- the lyrics with the music, that's and, where this came on. It's it the affects. last thing I've done. If it was mm. probably the first thing I did in the beginning, I probably wouldn't harp on it as much. But the music, when I was listening to in the car for the last couple of weeks, didn't pick up on it much. Now I'm like, holy Christ, this is fucking bad. And I, and I just <laughs> simply put it, better if you put these songs in AI, you could predict and create Wasp next 20 albums. And I bet you that's what happened. This is what they all sound like. Pretty generic stuff. Um, but, you know, overall, this isn't that bad. So let's go to the final song, and it's apropos. <laughs> the torture never <laughs> stops. Well, for Zeus, it's been torture. <laughs> well, so. Tom, you knew that this was going to happen in our little text group. <laughs> As we were talking yeah. about this album, yeah. I think Tony's the first one who sent the yeah. joke about this song title yep. to us. Yep, yep. <laughs> 
Um, yeah, the torture hasn't stopped since you guys asked me to review this record. <laughs> yeah, I mean, th- again, it's a, it's an interesting kind of funny way to end the album. Um, it's okay. I mean, it's 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 an upbeat song. It's got a chugging kind of heavy riff to it. The chorus, I kind of like the chorus. The verses, I'm not a big fan of. I don't like kind of like the I don't kind of like the the phrasing of the verses. Chorus kind of rips. Got a cool bridge. I'll take it. Look, I, I, at at this point, I'm sucked in. Blackie has me friggin' captivated. You know, it's it this it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, um, the verses are pretty bad on this one. Yes, um, like you said, just the phrasing, especially the second verse that starts with "suck, suck, 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 suck." Yeah, it sounds so summer sweet. down, dude. Yeah, yeah, it's like, real. It's real. suck, suck, suck. <laughs> You know, I, I get it. It was clever. The first line that you wrote, oh, this this works really well. And oh God, how am I going to follow it up in verse two? I know this because I do this to myself. And then I'm like, suck, suck, sucking. That would never come out of my mouth. I'll tell you that right <laughs> now. Um, but the chorus is exactly what I thought it was going to sound like. Because how 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 else are you going to sing that? Yep, that's exactly what I thought it was. I sang it the first time it came out. Um, but I got to say, as dumb as this song is, the chorus did stick in my head. Yep. And 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 it, I think it's a it's a really good way to end this record. I think it was nice. the right song for the end of the record. Okay, the torture never stops. Written by Blackie Lawless. I just put this is this title is just too easy. I'm I I can't come up with something as clever as I should, but whatever. Um, I'm like I just these verses are too difficult to remember. But the the I as soon as you say the torture never, never stop. like you can you can remember every one of these choruses, which again give tip your hat to them. But I can always fall back on these you know different repetitive choruses. There's a decent solo here, and then I said, I at the end he screams, and I'm like, that's it, that's what I figured out. I told you guys I would tell you what it is about his voice, who he reminds me of. It sounds like Sam Kinison. <laughs> oh Jesus Christ! What? That's hilarious. Sam listen Kinison. to that scream. <laughs> listen to that scream at the end. He does. It sounds like Sam Kennison doing that. <laughs> oh God! Oh my God! That's funny. Uh, oh my God! And, and maybe that's what he reminds me of, and that's why I'm like, there's something about his voice. I don't know, but it's very distinctive. I'll give him credit. And distinctive in my mind usually is a positive thing. And I just finished our my last comment on this and just said, thankfully, the torture does stop. Because <laughs> this was the last song. Go ahead, Tom. You can lead us off. Final thoughts. So as I said earlier, I've never owned a Wasp album, never listened to a Wasp album. I knew a couple songs. I kind of knew what I was getting in for. I was a little bit surprised. Look, I, I like the album. Um, I enjoyed listening to it. I mean, it is what it is. I take it, took it for what it was. I mean, I, again, I'll say it again for the hundredth time. You get somebody whose vocals I enjoy listening to. It's going to be hard for me to get sick of hearing them. Again, it wasn't super slick production. So it sounded heavy. It sounded thunderous with the drums. You know, the lyrics are stupid, but when I'm listening to this stuff, when I'm driving or if I'm at the gym, I'm not listening to the words of the song. I'm paying attention to the drums, the guitar, the harmonies, the chorus, and I was kind of pulled in. I mean, yeah, there's some weak songs. It's not a five-star album, but I really found myself enjoying it. I thought it was a pleasant surprise, and I'm not going to lie. Patreon, I've started to explore the rest of Wasp's catalog, and I kind of like some of what I'm hearing. So I'll give some kudos to Patreon for pulling something that I would have never imagined listening to. Oh, boy. Uh, uh, You know, I got to echo a lot of what you uh, just said. Uh, I was pleasantly surprised listening to this because when you guys asked me if i was a wasp i'm like no and uh <laughs> yeah hey, you want to do this absolutely yes of course that yeah makes let's it more fun. go let's fucking go <laughs> and then i was like shit i actually kind of like this yep um i actually ended up you know again don't pay attention to the lyrics because most of the time i don't anyways every single chorus like zeus said stuck in my head I can sing every single one of those things. I can tell you exactly how that goes. Versus, eh, probably not so much. A few of them, yeah. But for the most part, all these choruses are catchy. Every single one of these songs is catchy in some way, shape, or form. Uh, even the shit ones, and there are definitely shit ones on here. Um, 
but overall surprised that it's as good as it is. Cool. All right. All right. So Wasp, I knew of them. I had some albums from them. Uh, kind of figured what I'd be getting and I got what I thought I'd be getting. Um, there, I, I know you, you probably may think that I'm like, oh my God, he's just destroyed this. I'm not. But compared to the albums we've have reviewed on this fucking show, which are some of our favorites of all time, it's hard to put an album that you're not really that big of a fan or hasn't been in your history for that long to be like, oh my God, this blew me away. Because if it was that great, it would have been on my radar before. Generally speaking, not not all the time. Sometimes right, we right. find stuff that we're just like, holy shit, where's this been? But yep. what's happened by listening to this is I've had this conversation a little bit with Tom before. I, I realized what kind of music I like. And although I like a lot of the hard rock, glam, hair metal, whatever you want to call it in the 80s, I find myself thinking there is, I, I like certain bands, but certain talent level. Great White, Rat, Dokken, Motley Crue, Bon Jovi. Yeah, me too. We all do. Okay. There is another tier underneath yeah. there that I will like a couple songs, but too much shit is in their album that I can't just get into it. I, I just, it doesn't work for me. I can't get into just hard rock fast. And blah, blah, blah. That's just not for me. Some people fucking love that shit. That's right. not me. And there, so, a, a lot of the songs on this were this. Now, the, the, the lyrics are beyond stupid. The lyrics aren't why I'm not a huge fan of this album. Yeah. I listen to hard rock and kiss and other music. And some of the lyrics are fucking brutally stupid. I'm just having a little fun with this because they are fucking really ridiculous. Yeah. And it's, I'm having some fun with it. But if the song was unbelievable, I wouldn't have a problem liking these songs. Like right. I said, we like fucking some of the shit that we like, but I've, it has to have a certain talent level, although they can do, there's nothing on here to me, honestly, even BAD bad, that is fucking turn it off while I'm driving. I can't listen to this. This is so horrendous. Those songs that are bad that we laughed at unintended, I will still listen to it. Mm -hmm. Like there's nothing that was horrendously awful on this. That is some, some of our, our alternative or grunge bands, when they go out on a fucking limb and put something on an album like fucking, I, I, I don't know, shit on some of the Pearl Jam's albums that they, they I swear they fucking just punk at us. Like, this is not, a, what the hell is this doing on an album? It's fucking, yep. I got bugs in my hair, whatever the fuck that is. There's shit like that, that I, I can't literally listen to. But this, there's nothing really that bad. But I just... I what I really come to think is I have a more of appreciation of how good rat Motley dark and Bon Jovi and them are. And it's, you know, when they throw these things together and they lump them all as hair metal, oh, hair metal, it fucking diminishes how fucking great those other bands are because the rest of them fucking like, Oh, Oh, they're all like, that. no, 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 no. No different. There's a huge different. You know, Poison may come up with a good song here and there. So may Warrant. They're not like in those other guys, at least for me, level of songwriting and, you know, concert experience and things like that. And this band is in there. I'm sure I'll find other songs from Lost that I'm like, yeah, I actually like that song. It's just this album I've, can't keep up with those great songs. Those I've never, con I've never, then or now, I've never considered Wasp hair metal. I've ne they, oh, they for, fit in that. They fit in for, that for, era. For, 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 well, because they came out in the eighties. That's the only yeah, thing they yeah, have. Yeah, but in I put them in. But no, no, no. But I'm just, I'm just saying. What I'm saying I'm, right? I'm, no, no, no. I'm not, and I'm not pointing. Where at would you, you put them then? I, I would just say they were. I just say they're like eighties hard rock. They're not hair metal. I wouldn't put them. Those bands that you just named. Uh, me personally, I would never put them. I would never have them in the conversation with Rat and Dawkins and Great White. Uh, to me, they're they're. I don't know where they are. I know it's hard to describe. They're not metal. They're they're not Metallica. They're not Maiden, but they're not Rat. I don't know what they are. I don't know. You think Wasp is like at a different hard, hard, like rock level? Than I don't know. Rat? No. I don't you know, know. Tony, what do you think? You know, um, 
I think prior to listening to this record, I would not have considered them hair metal. Okay. Or in that same genre. But as after listening to the it, Dawkins maybe. and the Rats and the Warrants and all that. But now after listening to it, eh, yeah, they kind of do fall into that same bucket. You, you, you know you what know? I put them? You know what I put them in? You know what a lot of this stuff no. sounded like? A lot of this stuff sounded like Twisted Sister stuff. Ish. Which I would which, which, but I would put Twisted Sister in there too. See, yeah, only I, because this is the way I look at it, Tom. You either have thrash, you have grunge, or you have hair metal. Not that they're hair metal, but like you know what I mean when I, I do, start I, saying of that. Of course era. I do. So I guess right? I would have to I would have to put them in a different sub genre of hair metal, I guess yeah, is what I I'm saying. It. Exactly. Where they, where to, to me, it's they're like more a, it's like they're, a D League. Yeah, they're Shock more they're, rock a they're little, more but... They're more twisted sister than they are Dawkin, I guess is what I'm trying to say. For sure. I would put I For almost sure. wouldn't put Dawkin in there as hair metal because they weren't really as commercially leaning and pretty boys as well, Dawkin was band. doing monsters of rock. Hair bands weren't really doing monsters of rock, but that's oh, a whole other Then again, Bon Jovi was in that. Too. I know that, that's a whole other episode we can get but, into. But, but, but I know I, I just feel like there's certain there's only so many levels that we can say we know what we're talking about. I don't right. want to put Wasp in with Danger Danger. I get what you're saying. I don't want to either <laughs> because I don't want to either because I think Danger Danger is horrendous. I'm sorry if people <laughs> like them. I think to me hey, that, that is first like, record is good. To, oh, and that and Tony the first, I, first record. If you like you Danger, just Danger, gave Patreon people a fucking idea, and I'm going to kill you that they ever. No, 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 that's, total, that's totally that's totally fine. That's that's totally fine <laughs> if you like Danger. Danger I have no problem. But to me, that's. T- we always goof. Me and Zeus have those goofs like, oh, Tora, Tora, dangerous right. toys, danger, <laughs> right, danger. Right. Like to me, those are like the silly bands. But Wasp is obviously silly. But I feel like I guess I'm looking at this. There are a tier above them. To I me. guess I'm I, I'm looking at Wasp musically from a heavier sound. Yeah, the lyrics are absurd. But I'm talking about the sound, just the sound okay. of Wasp is not something I expected when I played this album. Yeah, they're not playing right. shot through the heart and you're to blame. Right. They're right. not doing shit like that. Right. I get it. But I just lump those. If we get out of our little niche and we just say something that era, it's either, again, from the 70s, classic rock, then you get into either the thrash bands, yep. the grunge bands, or the hair metal bands. Yep. Yep. Right? Yeah. And then the yep. arena rocker bands, like the Journey Sticks and fucking... Chicago's yep. and stupid shit like that. Yeah. But I just for me, they they are different. But I find myself looking at this and being like, you know what? I, it to me, it shows how great those top bands are. Oh yeah. yeah. How great totally. of an album. Think about sure. this. How much of a difference this album is to a once bitten for me. It's like, totally it's different bands. Not, so they're not even the only thing I have in just common saying is, the, the talent but, wise and yeah, how good but, these things are. Yeah, but and these great in white together. to wasp is like comparing. It's just, they're not even on the same planet. They're a blues based band, and this is like a like a borderline metal band. I get it. However, they probably sold about the same amount of fucking records in the eighties and stuff. But to Maybe. me, talent wise, mm. those there are bands like that. Tesla is another one that are just. In a different level, and yeah, I agree. More, more credit of how much of a difference it is them versus that level below them, and the I, yeah, wasp I, and twisted sisters are probably in there. Poisons and fucking warrants and and bands like that that just are not up to Bon Jovi crew and all their level. Uh, yeah, and that's I get what it. I, I figured out. That's what I kind of like, and that's the kind of music I can like. Some songs from these bands, but overall, I'm just not into just head banging music. It doesn't get work it. for me. Oh, okay. So, yeah. Anyway. I mean, looking uh, looking at this band, I would think they would would fall into the same category as like a Raven, or okay. you know, bands like that. Okay. Um, yep. Which then again, I don't even know what fucking with... Raven is. Raven. Uh, Raven, uh, Raven is like uh, Raven. the wrestler from fucking Raven, WCW. Raven, Raven's like pre hair, like proto hair metal, I guess maybe. Nah, are they? I mean, the, the well, fucking drummer didn't. Who's wear, the like, ones that used to fucking dress shit? up in the loincloth? Oh, man God. of War. Uh, man of War. Yes, that, <laughs> no, we're not talking about that. That's, yeah. po- the, that's power metal shit. See, that's that kind of what, what I was thinking. This was going to sound like, and then they kind of were, yeah. a lot fluffier than they really. Because looked. I think they came from the scene. Oh, totally. so they have a little bit yeah. of the twisted sister original motley crew original 80s stuff 
And he just, they weren't pretty enough like Vince Neal in the front That's to kind happened. of move more into yep. the glam. So they had to stay with the shock. They had to stay with the, they had to stay with right, this, right. the violent imagery, the shock room. Yeah. 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 Anyway. Well, anyways, we did this album. Now what we're going to do is we're going to rank these 11 tracks. So who wants to go first? I'll go first. All right. Tom, Tony, then me. B-A-D bad. <laughs> That's I, I got that I got I got that at number eleven. Uh I, I I got the school days at number eleven. Ah, okay, okay, yeah. Um, for me, it's on your knees. Oh my God, you have that last. You shall yeah. be. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> fucking because I want you. Wow, I I yeah. have I have school days at number ten. Mm, I have B A D bad at number ten. Nice. This is fucking hard, man. Mm, is it? I'm gonna go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, when that nothing's be, really good, that might be the line <laughs> of the episode. Is it? <laughs> I was gonna I'll actually go with, flip that one into a good for you, Zeus. Did you eat the mango? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did it move? I'm gonna go with Hellion. I how do you oh. not have school wow. days yet? God Jesus Christ. Yo, we are see. Are you, you know, are you really like reverse ranking these? Every <laughs> oh, episode wow. this happens with <laughs> I swear right. to God. All right, number nine for me is Tormentor. Hmm. So here's where we split. Okay. Because for number nine, I got I wanna be somebody. Ah. Okay. Oh. Okay. <laughs> um. I'm going with tormentor. This is fucking brutal. Okay. Uh, let's stick with that theme. Uh, number eight for me is the torture does <laughs> indeed stop. Mm. Ditto. Okay. I'm gonna go there too. I just want I just want to highlight the fact that Zeus still hasn't ranked school hasn't days yet. <laughs> I just, no, I just right. want everybody to be reminded of that. Did he do B A D yet? No. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what? He's trolling us. He's trolling us. Uh number seven for me is sleeping in the fire. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Seven for me is on your knees, because I want you. Okay. Zeus seven. All right, all right, all right. Booger, <laughs> I'll, I'll give you. Uh, I'll throw a bone to you guys. I'll go with B A D. How's that? Don't throw us <laughs> anything. Do Don't you do think? us any favors? It's okay. your ranking that's going to look crazy. All right, uh, number six for me is I want to be somebody. I have Hellion at number six. Okay, I'm going to go with L O V E Machine. Okay, that's my number five. Okay, five is where I have Tormentor. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to go with... What do I have left? <laughs> All the bad songs? <laughs> the whole album, then? <laughs> that's why I was like, ranking this album is like... Uh, uh, okay. okay. <laughs> you could just put... You just leave them in order if you wanted to, really, but... Uh... Uh, is that oh. wacky? <laughs> oh, of cool. <laughs> Patty Lawless. I'll be Lawless. Patty Lawless. <laughs> God. Let's go with. Um, all right. I'll finally go with School Days. Oh, no, the fact that that is fifth is <laughs> just five. Fucking horrendous. Holy shit. You uh, made the top five. Wow. No. Uh, number four for me is Hellion. Four is where I have Animal. Okay. All right. I want to be somebody. Okay. Three for me is Animal. My th number three is L O V E Love Machine. Okay. Like a sex machine. <laughs> three is Animal for me. Ah, that's a James Brown lyric. <laughs> He meant that shit. <laughs> two, two for me. Wow, this this is one of those rarities where we're just opposite ends of the spectrum. Zeus had this last. I have it number two on your knees. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. I went. I actually went with sleeping in the fire for number two. Oh wow. Okay, Tony. I'm gonna match you there. Wow. Sleeping in the fire. 
Uh, wait a minute. Wait, Are you about to tell me that all? The, no the, way. I, I don't know. We're going to have to do some research, Zeus. I don't know when the last time all three of us had We've the same. That. Plenty of times. I know, no, I know what's happened, but it's a rarity. All, all of us have the flame. Wow. All four of us. Last time Tony was on, we had Kiss of Death. Ah, oh, good point. Too. That's right. That's right. Hey. So we all got the flame. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. obviously oh. the best song. Well, on that, that. I mean, that was, come on. That, that That's a hands that stood down out. Best song on the record. I just think but it's you guys funny. Are like, mm, go ahead. I was just going to say, Tony, I think it's funny how we all picked this number one. We uh, it, it stood out, and your friend's like, yeah, there's a couple of clunkers. The oh, flame. The clunker. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, wow. What are you yeah, but, talking about? Like, you guys are giving me shit, but, like, really? Is there a huge difference in fucking no, no. some of these songs, other than the top two sleeping no. in the flame? No. I think they're no, cut above no. everything else. No, like, I agree. The rest of these are like... What's the difference? I can flip a coin tomorrow. I could ch- change them. Other I think so, first, uh, yeah. bef- before we get into the final part of the of the show, I, I do want to say that Zeus brought up a good point that I thought was interesting because this happened to me a little bit. I knew the chorus to every song. Mm-hmm. But if you try to tell me, hey, how does the verse go in Tormenta? I'd be like, I have no <laughs> idea. <laughs> exactly. If I played you a verse to a different song, you'd be like, I'd be like, oh, I don't know what that is, but I know no, that's the- it. Oh, but torture never stops. I can sing you the chorus right now, but I have no idea exactly. how the verses go. Yep. But I remember School Days' is fucking bridge. But that, but that's what we always say. That about little Paul. part, what, what I remember Paul, it stood out to me. What does Paul Stanley always say? Bore us to the chorus. Well, that's what yeah. Blackie did this entire album. But they still fucking is better than. No, no, no. I know. I'm just saying. But anyways. Anyways, that is the end of Wasp debut album. We closed the book on Johnson. Thank God for that. What's that from Major League? <laughs> Major League. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's like, that closes Thank the God book for that. that. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, uh, uh, what we do next is Tom's favorite thing, and that's this. Tony, what makes you rock hard? Oh, man. Well, <laughs> several things, including mangoes. Um, Viagra? <clears throat> but no, uh, recently I just watched uh, the Nothing But a Good Time documentary, oh, yes. three part documentary on, um, yep. what was that Paramount Plus? I think it was on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, man, oh man, oh man, it yeah. made me miss the 80s so much. Man, it was really, really cool. Um, and actually, from watching that, because there was a little bit on Wasp in there, yeah. I did start watching some Wasp uh, concert footage from 84. Yep. And you know how <laughs> he's admitted that he's using tracks these days and everybody's calling him Tracky Lawless and all that. Yep. Um, every live video I saw, even from back then, uh, there was tracks. Yeah. I, there was I tracks. Could, I believe really? it. You could tell. Yeah. 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 Wow. A lot of times he wasn't synced with the live vocal, the the main vocal, and in the backing vocals. Come on, dude! That's last Blackie in the background. Now, wow. I could I could be wrong, right? Right. I could be wrong, but no, I didn't like spend hours. So it's funny you say that. But just from the first listen, that sure as hell would it sound like to me. I wanted yeah. to see videos, and we found two videos. We weren't even sure there was two of them, so yeah. I looked to see if they did a video for Animal Fuck Like a Beast. I found the live performance of it around eighty four. Mm-hmm. I don't know if that's the video that you saw as well. Tony, I saw full and I saw concerts. Them. Okay, I so no, I saw the clip of them just playing that song, and the the thing that I took from that, I was like, wow, he sounds pretty good. He sounds just like the record. <laughs> to my exactly. mind, I never even imagined that he could be singing to tracks or something like that. So now I'm going to look back. I'm going to go back and listen to it. But I'll send you the clip, and you tell me if that's him singing like that yeah. or because it's I mean, funny you just said that. Wow. But yeah, it, but I, it, I was. I was Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, we were texting about this the other day. I can't wait. To, I haven't had a chance to watch this documentary yet, but we, we yeah. the book. We read the book because it's based on the book, Nothing But a Good Time. So I can't wait to say, I mean, we all we, we all come from the same era. We love this shit. So I, I assume yeah. it's, it's a great doc. Tom and I so. could have had the Freaking authors awesome. on way back when. Yeah. They, yeah. They wanted to come on the show. We're like, we can't yet to read the book. They sent us the book twice because I don't know if they got the wrong address the first time. We got it. And then uh, I think they fired their publicist. And yep. so we're like, oh, shit. We missed and them. Now, now they have the documentary oh, on. Yeah. 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 That's good. Because, yeah, it's really, really good. I enjoyed nice. it. Nice. Yeah. 
All right. So for me, I just discovered this brand new show on Max. Um, first episode. Skinamax? Yes. First episode dropped September 9th. New episodes drop every Monday. It's a series called The Real Murders on Elm Street. So when I saw it, I'm like, ah, is this like some Nightmare on Elm Street thing? Because I'm not a big fan of Freddy and Nightmare on Elm Street. No. It's even weirder than that. It is a true crime series where each episode is based on a murder in a small town that actually happened on an Elm Street. So they just, they found, they found crime scenes throughout the country that happened on an Elm street. The actual street is Elm street where it happened. So the very first episode takes place in Townsend mass, which is about two towns away from me. That's up North. Yeah. Yep. So I, I, so I live in, I live in Southern New Hampshire. Two towns over is Townsend. Absolutely batshit insane story. Okay. 45 minute episodes. The second episode takes place out of Spokane, Washington. Another absolutely batshit episode. These are all like small town crimes that like, you know, shook the foundation of the community kind of thing. Um, They're wild. It's really good. It's on Max. It's called The Real Murders on Elm Street. By the time this episode drops, episode three of the series will already have been out. So uh, if you have Max and you're into that true crime stuff, I would definitely recommend it. Wow. Cool. Yep. All right. Tom, uh, me, uh, I have uh, something that I know you love, and I'm sure you'll watch. Uh, we uh, both, Tom and I, uh, Tony, are big mob mafia type fans. Yeah. So on the History Channel, they had something that played earlier in the month, a documentary called American Godfathers, The Five Families. Still haven't seen that yet. Yep. Three episodes. It's on the History Channel. Um, the guy is it's an old guy. He's in a lot of these A and E videos. His name is Selwyn Rob. I think he he's like a mob historian, and he's always on those like talking about it. And it gives the background history of the five families. Every time I watch these, there's always one or two f- families or sagas that are very repetitive. That are, almost like back older footage I've seen on these documents. But then there'll stuff. There'll be newer stuff. They really go into like uh, some characters they don't normally go into. When I see these shows like Joey Gallo, they really went right into the Columbo Wars and the yep. Joey Gallo stuff. You've seen uh, Crazy Joe, his history, oh, yeah. his mob stuff is fucking hilariously fucking insane shit in the yep. 70s. Uh, and late 60s. Uh, then they get into the modern stuff. Who's left? Um, the you know, so there's three episodes. The first episode they call the death of the old rules and like the Luciano stuff, building up the five family, then the rise of the new dawns. You yep. know, talking about fucking what's his name? Uh Gaudy and Gaudy. all that. And then and then the last dawn episode is literally about the last families that are left. And uh, the uh, Bonanno family's fall and take down of the big mob guy who's the only Don that's ever flipped and yep. actually ratted on the mob. Ratted, and stuff. Yeah, nice. And uh, I love that stuff. I, 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 I watched that stuff when Tom and I went to Vegas. We went to the mob museum oh, and so cool. uh, love that shit. It's so much fun to look into that stuff and yep. know the history behind it. Anyways, if you like the mob stuff, it's on the History Channel's three part episode. Very simple wash. It's it's fun. So cool, cool. Yeah, good shit. All right, Tony, let us know where people can find you, your band, any of that stuff, and what you got going on. You know, normally I would, uh, you know, plug a website or something like that, but um, this time, here's what I'm going to do. Sonny gives me shit on a regular basis on his podcast about how my band Restrained has 22 monthly listeners on Spotify or some stupid shit like that. Because I'll tell you what, our fans don't listen to Spotify. They bought all our records. So I don't care if we have that. However, just to shut his ass up, if everybody could just go stream one song from Restrained on Spotify, pick one. I don't know. I Walk Alone. Let's do I Walk Alone. If everybody just go stream it one time for me. Mm-hmm. Okay. That's all. That's all I want to ask for. Okay, um, we'll do it. Take, take four minutes of your time. Okay. So everybody that's out there, go to Spotify, find Restrained with a Y. Yep. Why? Because cle- that's, that's me rolling my eyes. Yeah. Because he's clever. 
Um, And subscribe to them and then download their stuff. And then if you want, go find Tony on social media. I'm sure. Do you have restraint? Does restraint still have its own website? Yeah. Well, restraint. They can order CDs from there directly if they want the product, the physical product. Right now, our site's down. We're revamping the site, so that's why I didn't okay. plug the site. But we are on Facebook, Instagram, yeah, Twitter, yeah. YouTube. Yeah, subscribe to our YouTube. That'd be that'd be very helpful. Okay, uh, and yeah, then, cool. And if if you want to follow me, I'm on YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all that stuff. Cool. And you can people can talk to Tony, DM him, and uh, if you're interested in any of his music, you can buy some of his CDs or subscribe to the. YouTube and Spotify channel and help a brother mm-hmm. out. So thank um, you. Also, we got to thank Tony because we're going to use, we, yeah, I mean, I'm going to tell him, but we're going to use your new <laughs> little drum tracks you put oh, okay. on for the ARC theme. We'll put it to the beginning and we'll put it at the end. Tony's yep. been doing our ARC theme for quite some time. So if you like that shit, that's more or less what you're going to get with Tony. Uh, check it out. He added some drums to it. So we appreciate you doing that, buddy. And thank you for coming on and joining us once again. And hopefully there'll be another cruise again, some sort. Yeah. And you can yep. live with us and poor Tracy and the four of us <laughs> can have some fun again. Tony, yeah. thanks so much. T- t- thanks so much for joining us, man. This was a blast. We knew we knew we knew that whatever album we picked with, with you would have fun. But Wasp just added a little extra so really appreciate it buddy thank you yeah no i hey guys uh, it's been too long um it was it was a blast love hanging out and just chatting with you guys bullshitting and uh yeah definitely definitely hope there's another cruise and if not we got to figure out just go on just a random cruise or something i don't know we got to figure something out we'll figure something out we will man tony thanks brother appreciate it brother all right guys all right tom uh, that was uh, Tony from Restrain, who helped us break down Wasp. Mm-hmm. Uh, what we have to do now is a fun part, and that is we have to rank this album against all the other albums we have ranked so far. So this is album number 56, although the episode is 57. Yep. Do you want to tell everybody what your top five album covers are? Yep, my covers are number five, Rage Against the Machine. Number four, Blizzard of Oz. Number three, Purple Rain. Two, Master of Puppets. One, Diary of a Madman. I get what Wasp is going for here. I'm gonna give him I'm gonna give him a plus and a minus for the cheesy factor because it's of the time. It's very 1984. I think it's entertaining. I'm ranking it probably higher than it should be because. Of the cheese factor, uh, I'm going to put it at 20. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's I, I, I just it, it's entertainingly stupid, so it deserves to be kind of high. So uh, underneath escape and above fair warning. That's correct. Yes. All right. Sounds like a plan. All right, yep. Tom. So for me, my top five album covers are uh, Peace of Mind, Diary of a Madman, Appetite for Destruction, Blizzard of Oz, Ho. Tell California. All right. I am going to be kind of close to what you're doing, Tom. I am going at 22 okay. underneath automatic for the people and above moving pictures. Okay. It's interesting. It's an interesting photo. There's a lot of stuff in there and it's different. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. you can look at it and pick up different things. Again, like I said, I didn't even notice the eyes originally. Yeah. Right. So. All right, Tom, let's go to the fun part. And that is we're going to rank the actual album, compare it to other albums we've ranked. Want to tell everybody your top five albums? Top five. Number five is Journey Escape. Number four is Shout at the Devil. Three, Purple Rain. Two, Moving Pictures. One, Master of Puppets. Are we ringing the bell? Oh, God, no. (laughs) Stop. (laughs) I, I do. I, I will say I do like this album. I, I, okay. I It wasn't a labor for me to listen to it. I was entertained by it. We talked about the lyrics and how stupid they are, but that's okay. The problem is we've reviewed some fucking epic albums, like some real legendary albums. So it, it's tough to kind of stand with this. Uh, I'm going to put it at 38. It's going to go below, slide it in and right above difficult to cure. Holy fuck, dude. I like okay. it. <laughs> Apparently. I like it. Oh, man. All right. So my top five, 
is Pyromania, Blizzard of Oz, three, Hotel California, two, Automatic for the People, one is Purple. I'm going to put this. Are we, are we ringing the reverse bell? <laughs> no, 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 no. Um, I'm going to put this at, I'm going to put this at 41. Okay. Above Trash by Alice Cooper. Yep. And underneath Master of Puppets. Oh, I would have. This would have been the final show <laughs> if you had this ranked higher than <laughs> Master of Puppets. Dude, some of my oh, favorite oh, albums. I know. Oh, you I, have them. I and you put it above that. I know. I, I just, we got to, we got to, we keep saying we got to have a thing where we can do mulligans. Because every time I see this, I see Hailstorm being at 49. Yeah. And then I see Come and Get It, which is a good album. I have it way too high for me. I remember that episode. Yeah. Plus, just... plus, plus, it's now getting, we're now, we're 56 albums in. I feel like we need to start like sub ranking these. <laughs> like, like, okay, here's my classic rock rankings. Here's my grunge rankings. Here's my hair metal ranking. Cause it's, I mean, it's, it's getting hard to like ranking like Rush against Stone Temple Pilots. It's like, I don't know. I can't. I mean, I know you can do that. I can't. Hotel California against Purple Rain. Right. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I guess, again, that's the fun of it. But when you look at some of these older rankings, like, God, that is that is not right. So, guys, that was our episode of the Wasp debut. Uh, Before we move on, we always like to end uh, with some plugs. Tom, tell people where they can find us. Yeah, so we are Shout Out Loudcast. If this is your first time hearing us, we're an all-kiss podcast, dropping kiss-related episodes every Saturday. Once a month, we do these album review crew episodes where it's me and Zeus and a third man in talking about some album. Who knows what it's going to be? Uh, and that's a lot of fun. But please check us out on our website at shoutoutloudcast.com. We have the Shout Out Loudcast episodes, album review crew, Dome Damage, Zeppelin Chronicles, all of our social media is on there, so please follow us, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Threads, and our email address at shoutoutloudcast at gmail.com. Yeah, and don't forget to pick up your copy of Raise Your Glasses, our book uh, on Kiss songs, 50 years, all about Kiss songs, uh, as discussed by celebrities, wrestlers, actors, movie stars, podcasters, you name it. Uh, you can get that at shoutitoutloudcast.com once you go on the landing page or at, directly from Amazon. And uh, we appreciate that. It's still kicking ass. Thank you guys for the love and support for the book. And Tom, what we'd like to do is end on famous last words. Do you have any? Oh, unfortunately, I do. <laughs> My eyes are burning. Bells are ringing in my ears. Alarm clocks wailing. Class bells screaming. I can't hear. A textbook madhouse. 12 years. I'm here in a rage. A juvenile's jail. And I'm here locked up in their cage. Ooh. ooh. So did you aggressive. Say, did you say my eyes are going crazy? My eyes are going crazy. Oh, Tom, <laughs> I don't even know where to begin. Lots of options um, there, my friend. Oh, the all right. I'm on the prowl and I watch you closely. I lie waiting for you. I'm the wolf with the sheepskin's clothing. I lick my chops and you're tasting good. I do whatever I want to to you. I'll nail your ass to the sheets. A pelvic thrust and the sweat starts to sting you. I fuck like a beast. (laughs) 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 Patreons, you got what you wanted, people. Yeah. All right. Tony from Restrain. Tom, Patreons, Kiss Army, Loudcasters. Thank you, Tony. Thank you so much. This was a blast having you back on talking about this crazy album. Patreons, thank you for picking this. I think loudcasters, everybody, hubby lawless tards, all you guys out there, (laughs) wasp tards, and Zeus is always my friend. Thank you. Peace out, Girl Scout.